so we are live. Welcome, everyone, to this month's live event. I have with me my good friend, my buddy, Anthony Venture. Anthony, how are you doing today? What's going on, Stan? I love that countdown. I just feel like I'm about to jump into a movie, man. I get so hyped up for that. I know. I, I love the countdown, too. I made it custom just for these live streams. Maybe we'll change it up later on or so, but uh, it's, it's something that I really like enjoy with us live streams. And speaking of live streams, I know you do a lot of live streams yourself. And so um, thank you for inviting me way back when to my first live stream. I don't know if it was like seven or eight months ago, uh, yeah. but it was a lot of fun when we had, uh, I was on your channel for that. No, thanks for, you know, <laughs> coming on your channel, man. It's a, it's really appreciated. And uh, yeah, I just appreciate it. Yeah. Well, I mean, we have a good show for you guys today. We have a lot of great questions actually from the community tab. So we're going to go over those in a lot more detail as we kind of move forward with this. Of course, if you have any live questions throughout the time, you can always drop them down in the chat as well. We have some people in the house already. We have Anthony obviously saying, let's go. He's already here, which is great. Let's go. Always. Uh, we also want to make sure that we mention uh, CJ, who is first. Uh, CJ, of course, is first all the time, but Definitely, uh, you know, he he's lacking a little and, bit lately. I mean, yeah, <laughs> he, he has to fight a little bit for it, but he does a pretty good job with it. Uh, and so, yep. you know, we'll give him we'll give him the medal for today uh, okay. just because Anthony did show up a little bit earlier. He's part of the live stream. So I don't know if it, that really counts or not. Yeah. Um, Calby always is saying, CJ, you're not <laughs> first, of course. We also got a nice uh, super chat here from Xavier ID to start us off. Two dollar super spot. Thank you so much for that, sir. Thanks for coming in for this live stream today. And uh, we have Keith here coming in. He actually dropped this comment into my community tab a little, uh, like 30 minutes ago. And we'll talk about that. The theme of this live stream today is going to be the Robin Hood gold card. I've had a lot of questions about that card and, and what you should do with it or what you should, you know, if you should get it or not. And so I wanted to put that actual uh, commentary onto this live stream. So that'll be coming up in, towards the middle of this. So just keep an eye out for that. Uh, but Keith has uh, some thoughts on this. So we're going to go over that uh, and more, but he seems to not be a fan of this card. And and so that's definitely uh, something that may or may not resonate with me as well. So we'll have to see. Uh, we have Craig here who's in the house. He says, uh, current main cards, altitude reserve, city custom cash and Amex blue cash preferred. Any other recommendations to my trifecta? So let's kind of break this down for a little bit. So you have the Altitude Reserve, which is a 3X mobile wallet card, which covers pretty much all of the typical categories you'd cover. And I've covered this a lot in my other videos too, where I talk about the best trifecta, which is this card is one of them. And then you have some exception cases where mobile wallets are not, not accepted. And those categories tend to be things like dining out when you go to the restaurant you have to give them your physical card at least in the u.s as well as online shopping and so the city custom cash could actually be that restaurant card that has that five percent when you go out to restaurants it's not mx so accepted basically anywhere it's mastercard which is good you also said you have blue cash preferred which is great for that six percent cash back on groceries six percent cash back on streaming services and so that would also be good if you wanted to do that instead of having the u.s bank out to reserve for that that is going to be a higher multiplier even with the 1.5x rtr giving you that 4.5x back if you wanted to just use the blue cash preferred for groceries that's fine the only thing i'm thinking of now is what else is missing Mm -hmm. And that's that exception case we just talked about, which is going to end up being the online shopping category. So, Tony, do you have any ideas of what type of card may be worthwhile for that online shopping category to cover for this guy or Mr. Craig's trifecta? I guess if you are somebody just doing some online shopping, I mean, I guess it depends <laughs> where it is. You know, like, is it going to be covered under, like, is it only Amazon? And if so, I mean, does an Amazon card make sense? Or if you don't want to deal with that, you know, maybe, well, doesn't, uh, does the Blue Cash Preferred also have an online retailer? I can't remember off the top of my head. I know the Blue Cash Every Day does. It yeah. has a 3% online shopping. I believe it's up to 6,000 if I remember correctly, but I have to look that up. Maybe I'll do it right now. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, I, that's definitely one. Yeah. If it does have that, I mean, you might already be covered, you know, mm -hmm. otherwise I'm not sure what else you're using a city, city custom cash for. Maybe if you have multiple from of them, you can cover some other uh, categories as well. But I probably... You know, I probably just think like that. I don't know where else people are shopping online, either Amazon or if you can cover online retailer on the Blue Cash Preferred. If not, every day, sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think things like you know, for example, you know, all the shopper shopping uh, places you go to, like Target, Kohl's, like you know, I don't know things like Neiman Marcus. If you go that high hmm. in terms of like 
luxury shopping, all the online shopping that would cover, we cover with that. So yeah, yeah. blue cash every day would be one. I would say the B of A customized cash awards is my favorite one just because it does have 3% online shopping as a choice category, but you can also mm. bump that to five and a quarter percent with preferred rewards or platinum honor preferred rewards, mm. uh, which is nice. And there's a $2,500 cap on that um, for uh, every quarter. So it's not like the biggest amount, but it's something that can help you with that aspect. So I think I would just focus on finding a card, with, like you said, uh, Tony, if it's Amazon, Amazon 5% with the Prime card is, is a good option. Just find that, find those exception cases to that Altitude Reserve card and figure out what would be the best card for that. Yeah. So great. So we have Keith uh, kind of coming in. He'd rather get an Amex card than a Robin card. Actually, you know, I... I would tend to agree with that. I think there are a lot of great Amex cards out there. That's really good. That's saying um, something. If Keith wants to get the Amex gold card over any yeah. card, that's saying Mr. something. Uh, Mr. Built in the house over there. <laughs> yeah. Loves a built card. Love I have it. a video coming out, Keith, by the way, about the, the how I redeem my built points. It may come out in like a month from now, but you're not going to be happy about how I redeem my built points. We'll leave <laughs> oh, that, no. we'll leave that oh, for no. that a future video. CJ is here. Welcome, CJ. Thanks for coming in. It's about Matt time. Matt Clausen's in the house. Howdy all. Wonderful. Uh, CJ is trying to make sure that he is recognized that he is first, uh, but CJ, you know, you, you know, just because we're friends, I give you a little bit of benefit of the doubt, but you know, when someone is first, they have to be first. Today, I'll, I'll give it to you, but you know, obviously sometimes <laughs> you may come in a little bit, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, not, as, not as first, so we'll see. Dalton's in the house. What's up, Stan Anthony? I'm headed to the store and will probably miss the beginning of the stream, but we'll check in when I return. Perfect, Dalton. We'll be here when you come back. No worries. You can always check this on the video on demand afterwards as well, so don't feel like you're missing anything at this point. Juan Garcia is in the house. Hi, Stan Anthony from the MIA. Good to see you. Uh, I've actually never been to MIA. Have you, Tony? <laughs> what is that? What is MIA? Oh, what Miami. Is... Oh, it's just, oh, that's the, okay. Yeah, I, see, I believe I so. I think it's what you're saying. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I've, no, I might have passed by. I might have passed by a one, but no, I don't think so. No, I don't think I've ever been even close, okay. actually. <laughs> and Juan, just make sure that it is Miami because I'm not actually sure, but I'm pretty sure that's what that is. <laughs> Okay. Missing in action. <laughs> yes. Cesar, Joel, let's go to legend. Cesar, thanks for showing up. Uh, it's, it's always great to see you here, sir. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can get you on one of these at some point in the future uh, because you know, I, I love it when I, I watch your videos, uh, you know, and you have, like, you're on the other videos with other creators and you speak English because I can understand that. And you have a lot of great information for all of us to to learn, especially with the Hilton and more recently the CSR. I know you're a big fan of that car as well. So, um <laughs> There's that too. <laughs> Jake Vanderplug's in the house. St. Anthony, what's up, guys? Oh, we're doing great. What's up, Jake? How are you doing? Good, sir. Uh, Matt Clausen has another. Oh, good. He's uh, Matt Clausen. Always a bank of knowledge, as usual. <laughs> yeah. Online shopping, he says Amazon, Blue Cash every day. We have customized cash. Yes, we have confirmed that surpasses Forex. Thank you for uh, yeah. adding that too. I forgot that after that refresh, they did add that Forex online shopping category on the Hilton surpass card. So that is a really mm -hmm. good option as well. And I don't believe that is a capped category, if I remember correctly. I think uncapped. I think you're right. Someone someone check that. Uh, fact -check, uh, the that surpass. Uh, James Chafin, uh, Chafin or Chaffin, not sure, but I'll, I'll go with Chafin. Hey guys, love your guys' content. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate it. Keep up the good work. Any suggestions for using Amex MR points on hotels or any Amex cards you would suggest for hotels? I'm Tony, I'm going to hand off to you first. What do you think hmm. about this question? So I guess MR points on hotels. <clears throat> I mean, I guess at that point, you're already deciding you don't want to use your MR points for anything else. Um, that's what I'm just assuming in this case. So if you are going to do that, of course, everyone's going to tell you to just take advantage of whatever multipliers you can get on transfer bonuses like Hilton and whatnot. So mm -hmm. that's probably the thing to wait for if you are going to do it for that. But it's tough to say. <laughs> a lot of the times the value is earned just by, like if you're going to go for Hilton, just earning a lot of their, their points and then using it for that. I'd rather hold my Amex points, but, you know, it, I guess it depends. It also depends what cards you have. Like some people forget that, you know, maybe you can transfer your Amex MR points to Hilton and maybe get a cool redemption, but you have to also see what that end point might actually be because if you're somebody who has like a business platinum, you know, or a Charles Schwab like I do, you might be able to just cash out those points, Amex points at 1.1 into cash and then use that cash to book the Hilton and get actually get a better value. Mm -hmm. And then when you book cash, you can get all the other multipliers from your cards if you have Hilton cards. And then also on top of that, you know, 
status or you know um the points you get from actually staying for those places so it's, it's something to think about it's a it's a i wouldn't necessarily do it i haven't done it so far but if you're only doing hotels yeah i mean why not you know, get more experiences yeah I, I think i would tend to agree with that like you said i think it's helpful to transfer those points only in a certain situation for example when you have a bonus multiplier so there's typically sometimes 20 percent multipliers on the marriott or the hilton transfer portions um i do want to point out that it's very, it's not a great use of MR points to do an entire redemption through Marriott or Hilton using your MR points. However, if you're short on points, like maybe 5,000, 10,000, there, there yeah. is a, I would say that there's a reason to do that. And even though you may be taking a haircut, it, it's still worth it because you can get that points into the point bank and yeah. use that as a top off. That's helpful. But for Hilton, MS cards, I mean, you've seen the content already on that. And that's going to be the Hilton ladder, which everyone knows about. Uh, those are all Amex cards. The new business card is there too. So some people like it, some people don't. You know, I'm not a big, as big of a fan, but some people I think can get some good value from it. Mm -hmm. uh, as well as the Marriott strategy, that's also very helpful. Um, you know, knowing the brilliant the business cards, how to use those welcome offers in conjunction with the other Chase Marriott credit cards is very good to know. And that would be the Amex cards I would recommend for hotels. It's nothing crazy. I don't know if your question is also addressing using Amex MR cards. Uh, for hotels, hmm. I mean, the only one I can think of would be the green card because it has that yeah. 3x MR travel category. So you want to boost up MR points by using it for hotels. That would be another way to, to think about it too. So hope that's your question, uh, James. Matt Clausen chimes in saying Robin card at 3x will probably win out. So he seems to be a fan of the Robin Hood card. So we're going to get into that in more detail for sure. Um, and Saver ID says, in regards to Chase 524, do the inquiries just count? If they are for credit cards, or do they also encompass hard checks for homes loans that can land in your credit report? Tony, what do you think about this question? So just saying, do the inquiries... Yeah, so we say... Do they actually count against here as if you were going to have issues getting home, like loans yeah, in the so future? Yeah, so I think the main crux of the question is, are the inquiries what are important for Chase 24, or are they new accounts? Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you're going to get denied for 524, I mean, yeah, the amount of new accounts that you have. It's, it's gonna, so inquiries in actually don't yeah, matter yeah. at all for Chase 524. Because, oh, I see. Okay. Because it's really the credit cards that count on your report. So even though you have inquiries on your report, that does not count towards Chase 524. It's actually the new accounts that show up. So mostly personal credit cards. Well, I guess all of them. Uh, some business cards don't report, as we know, things like uh, Alex, uh, Chase, Bank of America, I believe City too, but I'm not sure about that. Mm. But I know Capital One does show up. I think Discover does show up too. So there are certain business cards that do show up that will count towards 524, but mm. for the most part, they don't, um, mm -hmm. which is very good to know. So it's not the inquiries. It's going to be the new accounts or the new cards you get on your accounts. Yeah. Um, I was getting the name wrong. This is Chris I, says, happy oh, Saturday. I'm here for this. Oh my God, Stan, I have to tell you. Yes. I have sure. to tell you about this. So Ziz is a... Uh, a He's not a he's a person who I think I believe he's actually from like Belgium or something, but he's Australian, and he was called Ziz, and that's what he called himself. And uh, he was a bodybuilder back in the day who really popularized the idea of just being as shredded as possible, just being super shredded, oh. and just he was like the aesthetics god of that of that time. You know, he used to do a pose like like you know something like that. Um, oh. And uh, he unfortunately passed away. He was, he was, you know, he was on steroids and whatnot. But mm -hmm. th that was he, he encompassed just what everyone wanted in the early 2012s, 2013s around there to be as shredded as possible, and then like go to the beach and get get girls and stuff like that, <laughs> and to and to rise yourself out of depression from that. So he was a, a beacon of hope for a, a lot of folks before he, he oh. passed away. I think maybe 22 he did. So I think he this is an homage. Jesus Christ is an homage to Zeus. I didn't know that backstory. That's really great to know. Well, I, I appreciate that tony and, and of course happy saturday to everyone here it's always great to hang out and live on a saturday morning I, I love doing these every month so we can kind of just get our questions answered and kind of have a good time you know mm -hmm. okay matt klaus is building his thoughts on robin hood perfect awesome awesome uh jake says talk to my coworkers about credit card rewards yesterday and they were shocked about the value you can get from the <laughs> credit card game do you guys have any good enlightening stories I mean, I guess I'll start out with this one. It's any travel you do that doesn't cost you money from money you already spent 
is a win. It doesn't matter how much or how little. Now, there's going to be times where you're like, oh, I went to like Bora Bora for like two weeks and I stayed at like the suite where I got graded and stayed in the Centurion Lounge at the same time. And like there's all these like stack on stack on stack, which is great. But I would say even if you take a domestic trip and it costs you like some amount of points and you went there and you flew for $11.20 because 560 round trip, right? And yeah. then you stayed in a hotel with points, didn't cost you anything. That's a win. There is no like, I think specific story from my perspective it's just doing that one time will start that train to be like wow there's a lot of opportunity here what do you think yeah same same exact thing i you have many conversations with people like i could think of well actually last night i was telling people it's just just how amazing you know credit cards can be and how they're just like you're wasting all your money because you're you're paying money on all these things that you you know you could be putting towards a, a welcome offer and i guess that's you know, driving the whole addiction that maybe some of us have, and some included. Um, but I remember a few occasions. Like I remember, there was this guy who was, uh, uh, I think it was helping him like get out of debt or something. Like he was trying to raise his score so he could buy a house and something. It was in the real estate world, and I remember telling him like uh, he's, was, he was just asking about the credit card game. I, I said, "Yeah, man, it's crazy. It's like I literally have enough Amex points at that time." I was like, I could probably fly to Japan like a, a few times. He was like, what? <laughs> He's like, you're going to go to Japan a few times? That's, that's crazy. And they don't realize the, the power of that. So like little things like that, I think, could be enlightening maybe for them. Be like, huh, this guy just, a random guy just told me that this is possible. Maybe he's, you know, <laughs> full of whatever. But, you know, it's, you know, it, that's a real story. And, and that's what a lot of people on YouTube are, are talking about. So it's probably just little things. Also, my family just being amazed, like, how are you able to do that? Like, we, you, you know, what are you doing to, to stay at these places until they realize, oh, credit card points and miles are pretty, pretty valuable. You know, they just, they don't know how to play it yet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, mm -hmm. that's definitely true. I, mean, I think it's really cool to see these stories from everyone else in the community, what they do to get their redemptions, how they get their redemptions, you know, and the value they get back from it. But everyone's going to be different on what they value to be good. Some people just traveling two hours down the road to like a different state would be good for mm -hmm. them. But some people going to Japan, like you said, multiple times is going to be kind of the way they get their, um, you know, get their value and, and really allow them to experience the world in a way they never truly have in the past. Mm -hmm. And on that topic, Josh Anderson asks, what's your personal best cents per point redemption? Um, and so I'll let you think about that one, Tony. For me, it, I haven't done a lot of international travel, so my limit I have a lot of limitations on cent per point. I, I will say that I did redeem points for my honeymoon trip coming up in uh, November, December area. And that was about a six cent per point uh, valuation when I did that redemption on the first class flight that I signed the book, which I will have a video on a little while from now, but that was my highest cent per point. I don't know if you had uh, a number in your mind, Tony, or not. Nothing too impressive. I mean, like Delta, I've gotten two cents per point, which <laughs> from what I hear, those are those are kind of hard to get. Sky is that expensive, that's what people say. Um, mm -hmm. But then also like Hyatt's, you know, I've gotten three cents per point on like regular Hyatt places and stuff. Nothing really higher than that, though. Because again, yeah, I haven't done anything internationally. And that's, I think, where you get those in crazy, crazy multipliers on. Yeah, yeah. Good. We have CJ here that says, who is this imposter? Anthony isn't the real Anthony. He lives in a Tesla, which is true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You are not in a Tesla. I appreciate you being in a different location, but is there a reason why the Tesla is not on board today? Yeah, the thing is, sometimes uh, the Tesla has to be, you know, Rent it out. You know, it's it's a robo taxi now, so it's full self driving. So I just send it out. It picks people up, you know, around, and it's no longer with me. So it's making money. Well, I'm just kidding. But uh, no, sometimes I have to. Uh, you know, what I do for these lives and how I can I can present myself in such a real professional way like this is I rent an entire house Airbnb. So this is like three thousand dollars a night. So I rent it out just so I can present myself in this way just for you guys. So that's uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, that's good to know. Well, we'll, we'll welcome you here. <laughs> Tesla or Sans Tesla, I have no yes. problem with that. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, one also says, it's, my name is M -A -S okay. Miami, so we've confirmed that's good. Uh, John's in the house. Welcome, John. Thanks for showing up. Uh, good to see you here, sir. I, I saw you in uh, your videos and also the recent live you did with... Um, uh, with Lonnie. I think I his name. Thank you, Lonnie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With call me Lonnie. A lot of you guys are up there. And actually, on that note, that's where I saw Cesar Joel. And that's kind of why I was making fun of him a little bit with the CSR, because he does not like the CSR like at all. Uh, I but it. I <laughs> wanted to just point that out to him. <laughs> and Filmo's in the house, too. Filmo78. What's Filmo. up, credit card guys? What's up, man? Good to see you here in the house as well. 
Um, I do want to uh, also shout out Darius Jamal. Darius, hey. good to see you, man. Thanks for showing up to this live, and hope you're having a good Saturday, just like the rest of us. And I uh, also want to say, Cesar says, Anthony's hair looks amazing. What hair products do you use? Because he wants to improve his hair on camera, too. So, Well, Cesar, we're, <laughs> if, you, if you want to improve your own uh, hair, you can pay me like $50. I'll give you a tuft, and they can... You know, they could do a transplant, so we can help you with that. However, <laughs> my hair, uh, for whatever reason, uh, maybe it's Italian or something, but it can do, I don't put any products in it. It just literally, like, I wake up, I could do that, and then it looks like this. So I, I hate to be, like, so perfect and beautiful, but the hair is just, for some reason, it just, it's so good. Like, if I wanted to, I usually show people, I'll, I can put it down here, and then I look like, what's up, dude? You know, but <laughs> if I put it back, we, uh, It'll pretty much look as it did. So no products at all. Nothing. No products. So yeah, he's just all natural. That's it. It's there natural. you go. <laughs> uh, I also mentioned my boy traveling with LV. How's it going, guys? This guy has a really great Instagram, by the way. So he does do a lot of traveling and does a lot of posting. So if you guys want to see what traveling for, for you know good credit card points and rewards are like and the places he goes, definitely check out his Instagram channel. Uh, hmm. Good to see you, man. All right, and then one more question before we get started with the slides here. Archie asks, how to increase your chances at getting approved for in cash card after being denied in the past? I know you, this is kind of part of your main strategy, Tony, about the ink <laughs> cards. And so you actually, I believe, recently got a ink yeah. cash card. So what are the things that you were thinking about of trying to avoid the denial when you were applying for that card? So as far as I've seen, and, and data points from now just having gone through it myself, talking to Chase reps, and then reading a million Reddit threads, and then other YouTubers who also got approved, and then people in the comments too, I found that it seems to me that anytime you are denied, there's always, they're always going to send you three reasons. The first one's going to be 524 if you are 524. If that's not there, then you're going to have a business structure. And from what I've seen talking to Chase Reps, that usually just means that your company, your business, is too new. It's uh, maybe sub one year old. I notice any the data points from any time they said, oh, my business is less than a year old, then that's when that came up and that's what kind of hurt you. Luckily, if that does come up, usually it's not a big deal. All the Chase Reps I talked to said they can usually overturn that. It's the 524 that kind of messes you up. And then also insufficient business deposits, which still they just mentioned is like, oh, there's no like banking relationship with us. But every time I talk to them, like, is this important? Is it pertinent to sign up for a business account, you know, with Chase to have that relationship? And they say, no, it really doesn't matter. They can overturn that. So for the most part, it's pretty much a 524 or bust but also some nuances are make sure your business is over a year old, which I think a lot of us can do uh, <laughs> for the most part or just wait some more time. And then also I've noticed anytime people got, they put their income, like their average um, like uh, revenue for the business, not their gross income from all businesses and, and W2, but just their business that they're applying for. If it was under 5K, I noticed more and more denials. And also even below 10K a little bit, but for the most part, when it was below five, it seems like they got more denied, even if 524 wasn't a factor. So now I'm making sure that I, before I'm applying, I have like maybe 10K or, or above, or at least above 5K. So those are the little data points that I found that seem to have allowed me to at least get approved for all the in cards so far. So it's three this year. I think those are all really good uh, data points and really good advice. I, I think I would definitely agree with everything you just said. Just some of my own personal data points that maybe go against that a little bit uh, just because of my own personal situation is actually hmm. my first two Chase Inc. cards, Inc. Cash and Inc. Limited. I got those cards at the start of my business. So actually I put like less than one year. And my hmm. I, both of those businesses, the LLC dates were like, you know, at some date. And then one week later, I applied for like, the ink card nice. and i got out of denied you know, <laughs> obviously <laughs> so both of those times you get denied but then you can go ahead and call recon yeah. and then you can explain to them what i actually say to them is very straightforward i'm like listen i don't use a debit card i have it and i had chase bank accounts with them so i had a debit mm. card with them, but i don't use debit cards for purchases so i really need a credit card for a purchase uh, to use for purchasing and and that sounds kind of counterintuitive like that wouldn't really fly that well but mm -hmm. if you have a pretty good personal credit score which they do look at and you have good on-time payments and other positive things under credit report that's personal i think they would be very happy to overturn it and they did it on the phone right away after i explained yeah. to them why i'm using the card it's because i have a new business and i need a card to purchase stuff that's kind yeah. of it 
Um, so there's that. So it, it's definitely the length of time that the business open is uh, uh, certainly a red flag for auto denial because it happened to me both times. But yeah. it's not like an end all. But what is an end all, like you mentioned, Tony, is that Chase 524 status. And so some people, they are lucky and they get it over. But if you get denied uh, over Chase 520, you have no recon. Like there's no way for yeah. you to overturn that or explain yourself out of it because you're just you're just over 524 and now you have a heart pull on your account for for nothing to show for it. So that's yeah. that's kind of what I would just watch out for. Yeah, the people that do are the exception, but not the majority. Yeah, which is really exciting for me because I'm under Chase 524 in four days. And so Whoa. that is sick. Congrats. <laughs> well, we know what you're going for from your last I video. I know. So this would be good. So we'll, we'll check that out soon. Perfect. So let's go ahead and get started with the slides here. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I got to put this to the very front. So we'll start here with our slides. So we have a live Q&A for uh, myself and Tony. We thank you so much, by the way, for all the community uh, comments about the uh, questions. We'll answer those in much more detail, these slides for both myself and Tony. Of course, thank you for, and I think we have a, a comment here where he says, was this? Was this? And then Jake also <laughs> says, I think it's pronounced Jesus Christ, no. but I think he says it's was this. So I'm not sure what's correct or what's not correct. You know, Tony? <laughs> It's this, yes. It's this. It's this. Okay. It's this is Christ, yeah. Okay, so it's this. <laughs> so thank you. That he says W and Calby says, "Go oh, man, it's gonna be good." I know Calby's in the house somewhere here, uh, checking on, doing some uh, commenting here, which is awesome. And we'll get to uh, more comments in a little bit. But again, this uh, live stream, we'll talk a lot about the Robinhood Gold towards the middle of this live stream. Um, basically, should you get it, and then also, are we getting it? Again, it's been kind of the talk of the town recently with this new car that came out with its 3% catch-all multiplier for everything, and everyone's talking about it. It's not out yet. It's still on a wait list, but there are certainly some things that are good about the card, certainly some things that are bad about the card, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure I give my two cents in, and of course Tony will also add in his thoughts as well. So, the first thing I want to do is ask this question from Tony, who asked himself this question. So, Tony, in typical Tony fashion, asked himself, why does he always wear a suit in his thumbnails, but never for a video? Seems like peacocking. And so what say you, Tony? So, you know what, Anthony, uh, that's a great comment. I appreciate you coming in and, uh, you know, trying, trying to put me on the spot and everything. So I appreciate that. Um, I will give you a real answer to this because there is a, a bit of a story to it. So if you see I'm pointing, uh, Anthony uh, in a suit down here is pointing to the left, or at least I mean, it's a video called Why Wear a Suit by Serpensa. This is a guy who um, moved to China from South Africa at a very young age, and he found a life in China, started speaking Mandarin and whatnot. And I used to follow him for a lot of his in insights into Chinese culture because that's what I was really into at the time. And he had this video called Why Wear a Suit. You can see it did very well, 1.2 million views. And he basically outlined a time where he used to work for, like in South Africa, I guess for the most part, a lot of what I've noticed from South Africans is they're very crafty. They learn how to build things and fix things. And it's, it's really tough living uh, out there from what I've seen and what he's talked about. Um, but usually you get a lot of skills and his skill was putting a, you know, putting computers back apart, you know, taking them apart and putting them back together. So he used to travel around and would, would do that. He would, he would fix computers and whatnot. And he realized like after job, after job, after job, um, as my light just died, job after job after job, he would get disrespected by the people that he would go to their house and stuff. He's like, oh, just go fix it, whatever, you know, go do this. Um, and uh, they, he would just keep getting disrespected. And then one day um, he decided I think he may, may have heard a tip from somebody because he saw like how they were being treated when they were in a suit. So he bought his own suit and he would go to these same houses that he would go to to fix their computers time after time. And the times that he went and wore the suit, they were like, oh, sit down. Do you want some coffee and everything? And it, so they gave him a lot of respect just by the way he looked, not even necessarily changing the way he's presenting himself other than the outward appearance. So it, it shined a light a lot into the world of what appearance actually looks like. And I realized how important it really is because at the time watching that video, maybe seven, eight years ago, I realized like I was wearing just like ripped pants <laughs> that I'm, I'm like repairing myself. I look like I'm a straggler, uh, you know, ripped shirts and stuff. So like big, big, uh, I look crazy. So I was like, man, you really do have to dress the part and you will get shown respect. So I think that's a big philosophical thing. You know, they always say dress for the job that you want, whatever. Um, but there came a time where I had to, uh, you know, I wanted to be a real estate agent, so I became a realtor. 
and I was wearing some shirts almost like this. <laughs> so then I was like, you know what? Let me remind myself of that video. So I went, bought my suit that this is here, my only suit, my blue one. And ever since then, I was able to start getting deals. People took me a lot more seriously. They thought like, oh, I was already making money because I'm wearing a, you know, a $500 suit. So it already gives you that impression like this is a guy who's been here before. I can trust him as opposed to just like, you know, a 20 nothing year old, you know, wearing some jeans, <laughs> like all oh, this house looks good. It's a million dollar house, you know? So, uh, a lot of it just stems back to physical appearance and how people treat you at first glance. And that's half the equation because when you open your mouth, you also want to have something worth saying. So, uh, <laughs> those two parts, uh, will lead you to, I would say, better interactions with people over time. So that's why I have the suit in the... <laughs> I don't actually put them in the thumbnail. They're just in the live stream just because it, it differentiates from the video. So that's the reason I do that. I um, see. But that's the yeah, story. That's, that's a great you know, answer. And thanks for that clarification and, and understanding why you were... I, I think it's great that people can dress the part. You know, Like you said, when you look more fancy, you're treated fancier. It's just part of the way our psychology works. There's actually a very similar study with doctors in white coats. Uh, we had uh, patients uh, look at doctors, just pictures of doctors, a uh, research study, where they looked at doctors wearing like street clothes versus a suit versus business casual versus a white coat. And in all the tests they ran, the white coat was always the one where they said they trusted the doctor the most, hmm. um, which is interesting because I don't, I don't wear a white coat in my <laughs> daily practice. I only wear like a, a, a business casual. But hmm. uh, some a lot of people do see the white coat. They think about, you know, um, you know, the doctor. And I think it's part of the psychology of what you expect the presentation to look like. And if you're in real estate, for example, suits would definitely show that you are more professional, more formal. And if you want to take that to like, obviously YouTube, that's also part of it as well. So definitely looking is, uh, the way you look is important. Sometimes though, you know, just dress the way we are now is fine too. Maybe it's more of a casual conversation. I mean, if you draw a suit and a tie, it may be too formal and may not be as fun to be in, in that situation. And so I think, you know, it depends on the situation that you're in. Uh, to figure mm -hmm. out what you want to dress as. So, but thanks for clarifying that question, Anthony to Anthony. If, if I could add too, I think it just shows that you, you, as Joe Beretta would say, you give a damn, <laughs> you know, and mm -hmm. I think that's important. Like, you know, if, if you're going to be doing business with somebody, I don't know, I get there's a whole world where you can speak a certain way and, and, you know, project your voice in a certain way, whatever. But if you show someone that you care a lot, like you're showing up early, you're, you're wearing a suit that's clean. Like it shows that you care, you know. <laughs> and I'd rather do business with someone that that shows up and cares than, you know, someone maybe that doesn't. Like they're going to get their my business versus someone else's. I yeah, we have some pretty good comments here too. We have Filmo saying that he dresses like a out of work bartender, which is <laughs> I like, love it. <laughs> it's totally fun. If that's your, if that's something you want to dress up, I, I think that's great. We know you're cool, so no problem with that. Mm -hmm. uh, fun fact: Calby says what Anthony is talking about is called the halo effect in psychology. Hmm. I didn't know how to name to it, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Clairvoyant says you could also just stand up straight and look people in the eye when talking to them. That yeah. respect. And I think that's a very, very true, especially like now, for example, I'm looking directly into the camera lens. It's kind of hard to do that sometimes, but that, I try to do that throughout the whole live stream to do kind of the same thing to connect when I'm talking, you know, about certain topics. So that's helpful. Cal yeah. also mentions doctor in white coats. It's the Milgram shock study. I don't know if that's the real name for it, <laughs> but if it is, that's, that's pretty cool that you know that off the top of your head. Yeah, uh, that's pretty awesome. Okay. So moving back to our next question here, we have Keith, asking stan did you honeymoon at the frying pan hotel so um i'll first explain what the frying pan hotel is to some degree i know tony you know about this way more than i would ever would but basically this is hotel in the middle of the ocean or something <laughs> and you have to like fly out there like by helicopter or by boat or something and that's the only way you can get there and you have to stay there for a certain number of nights and it's it's kind of a dangerous hotel because it's only on stilts and it's in the middle of the ocean. Again, it's one of those experiences. And you can also add to that, Tony. Um, and the reason why he's asked me that is because I did get married recently. So thank you, by the way, to everyone who, uh, you know, congratulated me, wish, wished me well wishes on my marriage. From, Congrats. Yeah, two weeks ago or so. Yeah, two weeks now. So thank mm -hmm. you so much. Uh, our honeymoon isn't happening until the end of the year. We decided to do like a mini moon, which we'll do later this month to Las Vegas. Uh, but we actually will do like an actual like trip to you know Japan and Thailand uh, at the end of the year. Ooh. So I didn't honeymoon at the Frying Pan Hotel, but did you want to first say something about the Frying Pan Hotel that I missed, Tony, about kind of what your status with that is? Um, well, the reason this comes up is Keith knows that I have uh, I have a YouTube goal 
uh, which I, like, I don't mention it really enough, to be honest. But the YouTube goal, if I hit 10,000 subscribers, then I will go and stay at the most dangerous hotel in America. And if you look at the most dangerous hotel, there's a few, but the frying pan comes up. And it's, yeah, it's basically, I think it's 40 miles off the coast of Wilmington, North Carolina. And you do have to take a helicopter <laughs> to get there. It's three days and $1,500. So I'm hoping to get it for free, maybe give them free publicity. But I'll pay the 1500 if we make it to 10 k. I I figured it was a fun, nice goal. It's a little on brand and kind of crazy uh, <laughs> with, you know, hotel <laughs> stays and whatnot. So that's uh, that's the goal. So if we, if we get to 10 k I'll uh, I'll go stay there and and uh, you know spend the fifteen hundred and spend three days scared because this thing is like on stilts like like Stan said and fifty years old run by one person so it's something that uh, <laughs> it's it's not a sure shot <laughs> let's just yeah. say it's not a sure thing I make it out alive so that's I don't the, know if I go there myself yeah <laughs> well <laughs> so um anyways so that's the Fryman Hotel so back to the honeymoon I do actually have a question for the community for the ninety of you so who are watching this right now thank you so much for tuning in on this. It's Beautiful Saturday morning here on the West Coast or afternoon on the East Coast. Um, I am going to go to Thailand for my uh, honeymoon, and I have a trip booked currently. I actually have booked the St. Regis in Bangkok for four mm. days. Now, when I looked at the points to redeem this with Marriott Bonvoy points directly, the redemption rate was pretty terrible. And the reason for this is because when you go to, I believe, when you go to places like Thailand, the price is actually very cheap because it's you know, not a, it's not a first world country. It's something that a lot of things that are cheaper. And so therefore the amount of points you get for the money you would spend in cash is lower. So therefore your cent per point is also lower. So I did book this with cash. Obviously I didn't pay for it yet because you can up to like two days before you can cancel the hotel, whatever. But it's booked right now in cash. Um, my thought was, well, maybe if I get some IHG points, which I, if you've seen my recent video, I'm looking into IHG more and more now, there's also an intercontinental Bangkok as well. And so that is something I'm thinking of maybe doing in terms of getting a new IHG card, getting a welcome offer on that card, using the points to spend on that so there'd be a free stay. Um, I wouldn't have my Marriott Titanium Elite status. I wouldn't actually have that for the St. Regis, but I would have... If I got a premier or premier business IHG card, I would have the platinum status which I with IHG, which could have some benefits too. I could also potentially, just for this stay, get that two hundred dollar IHG ambassador status to get the guaranteed room upgrade. Not sure if that's something that's worth it or not, but at least I'd pay for it with points and then only spend two hundred dollars for the IHG ambassador status to get four nights. And then because it's four nights, if I redeem it with points, I get the fourth night free. So it will increase your cent per point. And so I want to know from the community if there's anything, any thoughts about either the St. Regis or the IHG Bangkok, uh, if you had any personal experience with that at all, or if there's any other hotels you may recommend that may be really helpful or really nice in terms of either cent per point or just a really great experience overall. Um, I know that uh, one here is, so Ian says stay out of Bangkok. It's a waste of time. Go to Chiang Mai and Phuket. We will be going to Phuket. Uh, that's definitely yeah. going to be part of it. We we do want to go to Bangkok though because we do have family there, and so that is part of our uh, our itinerary to be uh, mm. there for our honeymoon. But if anyone has any comments on that, just let us know. I don't know, Tony, if you have any other thoughts or um, about that at all. No, I'm excited for you, man. I'm excited. I'm glad you. You know, I'm just happy for you. <laughs> I'm okay. excited for you too. <laughs> Fair enough. JP Knowledge coming in hot saying fourth night free is big. Mm -hmm. Yes, JP Knowledge has a lot of great information about getting great center point value both on hotels and airfare. So check out his channel if you have not already. But he actually had helped me book a lot of my flights uh, through his uh, booking service to get the best center point possible because I'm someone that, you know, I'd like to spend all my time on Seaside Arrow and, and look for things, but he was really instrumental in helping me get some really good redemptions for my honeymoon trip, which was, you know, it's a couple months away, uh, but we did do this like about three or four months ago. So mm -hmm. definitely uh, looking at the IHG thing, I'm not sure if I want to do it, but we'll kind of see uh, what the next step of that is going to turn up. And if you have any questions or any comments, just let me know. I'm happy to hear them because I want to learn just like the rest of you guys. Okay, next question is from CJ, <laughs> who asked, how does Anthony feel about being denied by Santander Bank? I don't know about this, by the way, so I want to hear the story. And second of all, which poor soul is going to the Frank Pan Hotel with you when you reach 10,000 subscribers? What do you think? 
Okay, so to the <laughs> to the second question, there's been many people who who said they would go to me go with me to the the frying pan hotel. I know Cesar wants to. Uh, there's, a few, there's a few people, but Cesar's the main guy. Um, I, I I'm fully expecting to go alone, and I think it should be done alone because this is my goal <laughs> to to hit there. I don't want to take anyone down with me. So if we go down, it's only on my hands, and, and there's no one else that that the, you know. I'll be I'll live on in infamy. I mean I will anyway, but either way I'll <laughs> if, you know, like what if Stan went with me and then that's it. And that's the end of Stan. Now we don't have amazing content from Stan. I would be hated on the gravestone, they ruin my you know everything. Oh, um gosh. so I think I'm just, I'm just gonna go alone. <laughs> I'm just gonna go alone and uh we'll see what happens and uh we'll you know we'll get freaked out. So yeah, pretty sure it's just me. Cesar, would you I would like go with you, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Always. I know you would, Cesar. I know. And I know if we go down with the sharks, you'll kill them for me. I know. I, I appreciate it. Um, but I, I think I had something I need to do alone. <laughs> okay. And then what about the Santander story? So, so <laughs> Santander. So, so, okay. There was a time when I was, I would say, I, I guess it was like 19, maybe 20. But I believe, actually, it might have been 18 or 19 years old. And oh, thanks, Phil. Mo. I will have we tight with you, Phil. I appreciate you, man. I'll anyone wants to do that, I appreciate it. Um, so, Santander, uh, back in the day, eighteen or nineteen years old. Um, uh, it, it well, right before that, all right. So I had a Santander bank account, and I banked with them because it was the one near my job, and it was easy to just walk across the street and cash my checks there. So that's where I used. Um, you know, that's why I use Santander. And back then it was called Sovereign and then Santander bought it out. So and there came a time where my dad kept telling me, he was like, go get a credit card. If you have a good credit score, it doesn't take anything. You can do anything you want in life. You can, you know, get home loans, car loans, and you call the shots. That's what he always repeated to me. And for the most part, what we do when our dads tell us something, we say, yeah, 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 whatever. But eventually it came to a point where I was like, you know what, he's right. He's actually right, and I'm started watching videos, and, you know, finance YouTube and stuff like that, just trying to get into it. Um, and I remember going to these different places, like I went to um, J.C. Penney to get a credit card, and they said that we can't, you know, we can't. You're denied. Sears, they were going uh, bankrupt, and they didn't give me a card. Like, how, how do you get denied for a card for a company going bankrupt? Unreal. <laughs> then I went, then I went then I went to Santander. I was like, well, I have a banking relationship with them. Like that should be a thing. That was my my conscious thought. So I went in there, spoke to this guy. I forget his name. His name might have been like, um, uh, I, don't, I don't remember. But he was really nice. And uh, we spoke for like a half hour. He was like, listen, man, I can't guarantee anything. Usually you have to have a score to be able to get approved. And I was like, isn't that like a catch-22? Like I have to have a score to get a credit card. But to get a score, I need a credit card. It's like the biggest catch-22 ever. So, so I talked to him about this. And he was cool. And he said, all right, let's put in your application. He put it through denied and he said there's nothing we could do whatsoever so i was like man nobody can freaking approve me for for uh, a card what's going on here until eventually i uh, i got a capital one secured card and a coles card and, and they gave me my shot but yeah this santander uh they were they, i just got to i didn't realize that was like hard to get denied for like cj was like oh that's crazy everybody gets denied Santander. i didn't realize that but i was denied because i had no credits so that's the story <laughs> yeah, once you're younger and you get started, it's hard to break in. Once you get that first card and you start building that history with that first card, you're in. Because like now you have no mm -hmm. problems. Oh, yeah. Them, right? Yeah, so oh, yeah. it's Nothing. getting into that system. Um, just coming back one second, uh, Cody actually says, St. Regis may be a better property, just assuming, but the value with mm -hmm. the IC is really solid. If you guys haven't checked out Cody's channel, he's a new and upcoming YouTuber, definitely check out those uh, his videos. He's got a lot of good information. He also mm -hmm. really likes Intercontinental, uh, sorry, IHG properties. And so mm -hmm. definitely uh, check them out because he did a, a video similar to, um, you know, uh, just look, talking about all the IHG properties and the IHG credit cards. And it's really, really good. So definitely mm -hmm. check them out. Thanks for the advice, Cody. Appreciate that. Um, I do want to also talk about Santander Bank too, because I also have some experience. And this is going to tie into the Robin Hood Gold card, which is kind of a, not really a far stretch, but it does address the mentality about what the Robinhood Gold card is about. So basically, I had a Santander bank account about 10, 9, 10 years ago. And the reason why I joined Santander was because I was in Boston at the time doing my medical training. And like you said before, uh, Tony, Sovereign Bank was the bank that was in that area or you know, wherever you were, but in Boston specifically. And they were recently bought up by Santander Bank. And so when I got their bank account, they had this really great promotion. This is like 24. 14-ish, 2015. And they were like, well, if you have an open bank account 
and you have at least $1,500 in that account, we will give you $10 every month. And if you do two bill pays a month too, we'll give you another $10 in your account. So you could get $20 for basically $1,500 in your account. And if you just you were really good about it, which I was at the time because I had a lot of free time, uh, you could get a 16% APY using this account. It's ridiculous. A checking account, right? So I was like, oh, sign me up. You know, I had all my accounts, uh, you know, at a, a different bank. I transferred all of my accounts to Santander Bank because I thought this is the bank for me because they're going to be the one that like I get the most value from. Because at the time, the APY was like 2%, maybe 2.5%. It wasn't mm. great, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't great either, right? So 16% APY versus 2% was like a huge jump. And as predicted, you got I got $20 every month into my checking account. And it happened for about, I don't know, maybe 18 months or so. Well, 18 months later, uh, around... I want to say it was 2016, but I can't remember specifically. It's it's about two years later. They sent an email saying, oh, by the way, we're going to cancel this next month or in a couple months from now, and it'll go back to a regular checking account. There's no more APY on this account. And for me, I was really frustrated because I had just spent all that time a year ago transferring all of my assets to another bank, only to be told by them that, no, we're going to cancel what you had from before. And so from that, for that perspective, what that taught me was that I really shouldn't be chasing the APYs on accounts, for main accounts. If I want to put some money here and there and let's do it on the side, I think that's certainly fine. Of course, bank account bonuses are a big thing, and people do that and get a lot of money from it, so that's certainly reasonable if you want to spend the time doing that. But to transfer all of your money to another bank for them to just rewrite what they are going to give to you and then regretting your decision, it, it's worth something because it's a, then they had to transfer all of my stuff from Santander Bank all the way out again back to my original bank, which thankfully... I did leave open. So I had all my other stuff going back to that bank. And then I've stayed with that bank forever. And in case you don't care to that bank, it's Bank of America. They're very solid. They have <laughs> always been there. And I know people don't like them sometimes, but they have always been there for me and they've never done me wrong. So that's my bank story. That will tie into the gold card in a second. Um, so that's the, the story wow. with that for Santander Bank. And Unreal. so... Yes, let's take a look. I think if that's the end of this break here. So we'll do a break here. Go back to our pretty faces and answer some more questions for you guys. Uh, Cody just says, appreciate the love, Stan. You're welcome, Cody. Thanks so much. Uh, our buddy from Traveling uh, with LV says, um, I think it, uh, it says, have you both have both personal and business IHG cards and fourth night is nice. Also comes with the FNC every year, so it's a keeper card. Have an upcoming trip in the Grand Cayman using fourth night free. Well, that's going to be a great trip, Traveling with LV. Awesome. Hope you have a great time. Uh, okay, so I'm going to move all the way back up here. I think there were some more questions that we could talk about. Um, how are you feeling, Tony? I'm feeling great, man. I'm feeling great. Okay. This is fun. I love this. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Um, David William asked, would it be harder to get an IHG business card with a small <laughs> prop phony business than ink? Don't want to waste my time. What do you think? <laughs> phony <laughs> business? Hey, you get approved for anything with a phony business, right? Um, I, I, I really don't know. I don't know the data points on IHG applications. I just know I hear more people getting in cards than IHG cards. I mean, both both Chase, so I, I, I'm not, I don't know what the, <laughs> the approval difference is between those two cards, do you? I mean, I don't think there's any difference. I, I think that I would imagine that the co-branded card is easier to get than the ink card, especially when it comes to 524. But there's no hard or solid data points that I know of that about that. I think it's just you apply for the card and see how, see what you get. Phony business. That's funny. Yes. Well, soul <laughs> props aren't phony businesses, but I see kind of where he's going with that. Uh, okay. Right. Uh, our buddy Zizis Christ said, "If I were at 424, then apply for the U.S. Bank Altitude Reserve, which brings me to 524, and I decide to <laughs> apply for a Chase card that same month before the U.S. Bank Altitude Reserve shows on the report." Will Chase care about the recent U.S. bar inquiry? And I did this exact thing yeah. <laughs> on this video when I was uh, making it for the Chase in Cash, and the answer is no. If they don't see it on your credit report, the new account, then it doesn't count, right? They will see the hard inquiry if it's on the right report, Experian, TransUnion, what have you, but it will not matter to them as it, term as it comes to 524. Yeah. Is that about right? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, you showcased that perfectly, so, yeah. <laughs> All right. 
And then Ron asks, have any of you ever stayed at an Element Hotel? He's planning a trip to Bozeman, Montana in October. I, I personally have not stayed at Element Hotel. Actually, I lied. I have actually stayed at Element Hotel. It's in, in, in New Hampshire, uh, which are very good. They're like suite hotels. Uh, they've got really? a lot of open space. They're very modern looking. Uh, it's one of those like extended stay type of places. Oh, so is, any, is it a part of a bigger brand or is it its own? I cannot remember off the top of my head, hmm. but I know that it is, it is definitely um, a more of an extended stay type of place. Gotcha. Um, I also want to shout out, I saw him here somewhere. I just like lost him. Uh, Got to go through all these uh, comments here. Hmm. Uh, Chad, well, 20 minutes. Yo, what's up, everyone? Hey, Chad, Chad, I don't know if you're still here. This is a little while ago, but great to have you here on the live stream and hope you're still here. And uh, thanks for showing up, man. Appreciate that. Okay. And so on that note, I'm going to kind of dive into this question because it's going to be more important coming forward. Hi, guys. It makes sense for Robinhood Gold if you like their investing ecosystem as they offer 1% match on tax deposits and 3% match on IRA contributions. I just don't like Robinhood after the GameStop fiasco. Uh, he also comes to, I believe he has another one here that talks about the Robinhood Gold card too. Um, that I missed, but I think I may have lost it somewhere. So I apologize for that. But no, I think this is a good segue into talking about the Robin Hood Gold Card because we definitely want to cover that. That is something that I think a lot of people have on their minds. And so let's go ahead and cover that right now. So this section is going to go uh, talk about uh, the Robin Hood Gold Card. And uh, again, what this card is all about is that has this new card that has 3% cash back across the board. So the, the thing about this card is that we all know that the catch-all credit card that we want to get is usually 2% or more. Um, a lot of cards out there have 2% cash back used with no annual fee, some with no foreign transaction fees, and so we want to have use it as our baseline. Well, the Robinhood Gold card actually now has this new supposed card that has 3% cash back across the board with a number of different benefits as well. And so a lot of these benefits are the things you typically expect with one of these types of cards, which is no annual fee, no foreign transaction fees, and also, like we said, 3% cash back on all categories, making it a pretty nice catch, uh, catch-all credit card for cash back. It even has this additional multiplier where you can get 5% cash back on travel when you book travel through the ultimate, sorry, the Robinhood travel portal. And so the Robinhood travel portal is something, I don't know if that's live yet, but I would imagine it'd be like the ultimate rewards portal or the capital and travel portal where they would link to certain airlines and hotel systems and you can apply or go to those places and get 5% cash back on your earnings. It also does something kind of like what Built does and does some other benefits and perks uh, as well, including trip interruption protection. They have purchase security, extended warranty protection. Um, it is a Visa card, so it does actually act as a true catch-all credit card as well. Because as you know, Amex, as well as so we like to have them be a catch-all credit card, it just truly can't be international or domestic because even some domestic places don't take American Express credit cards, so it can't truly be a catch-all credit card. There is also auto rental CDW on this card. Uh, from what I looked at, from the very brief terms and conditions I looked at, it seems like it's secondary in the U.S. if you have no insurance, primary if you have insurance, which I don't know why you would have car insurance because if you have a car, you have to have insurance. But I guess you, you didn't have a car. That would make sense. And yeah. then uh, if you're international, it's going to be primary insurance. So basically, it's a secondary auto CDW um, for this benefit. Um, you also get travel emergency assistance, like you mentioned before, it's a Visa card. So there's a lot of good benefits to this card. But not only do we have to think about the Robinhood Gold card, but we also have to look at Robinhood Gold in general, because Robinhood Gold is how you can get access to this card in the first place. So you can't actually have this card with that 3% multiplier if you don't have Robinhood Gold. And Robinhood Gold does have a annual fee it's in the form of a $5 monthly fee, so $60 a year. But they do offer some perks that come with Robinhood Gold that can be helpful to offset this annual fee and also be pretty good for uh, your retirement and for your financial future in general. So one of them is you get 5% APY on idle cash earned while you sleep. So basically they're saying you have a savings account or if you put it into your account, your uninvested cash will be 5% APY, which is it's pretty good. Of course, you're paying $60 for that. We'll go into that in a moment. But there is a benefit to having 5% APY in your account. The second is, as you know, the 3% cash back on the gold card. So that is also a really nice perk to have uh, available. Uh, 
instant deposits are pretty nice because sometimes you want to deposit money into your account and then use it right away to invest. That is a really nice feature if you're into more of that quick action day trading type of thing. I don't know if that's for me, but that is an available uh, perk on Robinhood Gold, so something to think about. And also the big thing that people were asking about a lot is the 3% IRA matching on every dollar every year. And so that's big for two reasons. The first reason is that when they first came out with this, and I think it's still going on now, this promotion, I think it started in late January and will be ending on April 30th, is that actually you can not only earn a 3% match on the contribution to your IRA, but also a 3% contribution on transfers and rollovers. So, for example, if you had a $10,000 Roth IRA and you transfer that over into the Robinhood uh, account, that would be three hundred free dollars. If you had a hundred thousand Roth IRA and you transfer those assets over, that would be three thousand free dollars. This can give it to you as a match, and that's for transfers, right? Also, if you do rollers from your four hundred one k, say you have like you know a very very large like half a million dollar four hundred one k, you roll it over into an IRA, they'll match that to three percent, whatever that value is going to be. So it seems good on the surface. There is some caveats to this transfer, though, and that is you have to keep your money in the bottom, I think, third paragraph here. You have to keep the money in the IRA for at least five years to keep that match and be a Robinhood Gold subscriber for one year after the first deposit. And so you have to basically hold that money in Robinhood for five years before you can move it somewhere else. And for most retirement accounts, that's typically okay, especially for those of you who are younger investors or younger, like 20s and 30s, you typically won't move your money within five years. However, that does limit your ability to, if you decide to do something different, say you got married, you want to consolidate your finances, or you maybe see another promotion that's a lot better, that's a different bank or different uh, custodian, you may want to move your account. Now you can't move those assets over if you want to keep that 3% match. Not to mention, you also have to move all that stuff again and do the whole like ACAT, trans ACAT transfer, and that's going to be just a lot of a headache that you don't have to deal with. But I can see the value if you feel like you are going to transfer the money over and leave it at Robinhood for that length of time. I can see the value of that because it is a lot of, quote, free money or match money. And then that's on top of the contribution. So after April 30th, you'll also still continue to get 3% match on any contribution. So I think this year is 7,000 for 2024. So you get a 3% match on that value as well. And so that comes to, to, I bring that all up because a lot of these strategies can be used to offset the annual fee or that uh, cost of the Robinhood gold. Like I mentioned, it's $5 a month or $60 total. So there are three ways to do this based on what we just talked about. The first is you can spend at least $6,000 per year on the Robinhood Gold card. So why do I say that? Well, if you have a 3% card and you spend $6,000 in that year, you'll earn $180 in cash back. If you do that exact same spend on a 2% cash card, that would be $120 in cash back. So the difference is $60. So anything after $6,000 will be a net positive in terms of getting cash back and you've also paid for that gold annual fee. And so that's what thought that's the magic number we have to hit. Now, $6,000 a year is not terrible. Like it's $500 on average per month, so I think most people can do that, but that would be one way to get that gold card annual fee back. The second thing you could do is you could put $1,200 in idle cash in the Robinhood brokerage. Now, that's going to change because it's not going to be 5% forever. As we all know, the interest rates are going to lower later this year, I think up to three times is what the Fed says. And so it won't be 5% this whole time. But assuming that it is, if you put $1,200 and you get 5% APY on that, that would be $60. So if you put at least that much money in the account, that will pay for the Robinhood Gold Card uh, annual fee as well. The third thing is if you go ahead and you transfer at least $2,000 into an IRA, this is the by April 30th, uh, because if you transfer the $2,000 into an IRA, you'll get that 3% match. That's $60 as well. So again, you have to keep that money in the IRA for five years, but that would be another way to at least for the first year get that $60 back. Now, if you combine all three of these, then you have something going on where you're getting a lot more, quote, value for the transfer that you're doing. But you can see kind of where they're going with this, right? They want you to do a lot of things like, for example, Wealthfront and M1 is doing, and that is to use this Robinhood for spending, investing, 
saving, and borrowing. They want to put you into their ecosystem. And also, uh, the credit card too, which is spending, you can also use that as well to, uh, you can use basically all their products under one roof. And so that's fine because a lot of other fintechs do that. But the question is, are you going to be comfortable doing that, right? And so the take for me is that I don't really have plans to get this card. And the reason for that is because it does take up a Chase 524 slot. Just like what Keith said at the beginning, that's important because if you want to get the most amount of value from credit cards, welcome offers are the way to go. And Chase has some of the most valuable credit cards. And so if you have a slot to give, that's obviously not a problem. But if you don't, then this may not be the best reason to do so. On top of that, I do have that Bank of America Premium Rewards Elite credit card that gets 2.625% X back on everything. Now, having 100K in Bank of America versus having 1,200 in like Robinhood, that's a huge difference. But I'm not going to move all of my money just to get this stuff because, like I mentioned with my Santander Bank story, um, they can change their uh, their things, their, their what they offer you at any point in time. It could be six months from now, it could be 12 months, it could be 18 months, but I guarantee they will change it. And at that point, you have to figure out to yourself, do you have a good, solid financial plan now? You know, you have all your money where you want it to be, or are you someone that's more newer and you're just starting out? If you're starting out, I can see the benefit of maybe going with Robinhood and using their credit card and like kind of establishing with them if you wanted to. But for a lot of us who are already like, you know, in our late 20s or mid 30s and our well, 40s or 50s that already have established finances with banks and brokers and custodians that we already have money with, it may not be worth the convenience or the hassle of moving all your stuff over and then having them change something and moving it all the way back. We also can't forget about what happened with Robinhood back when GameStop was happening back in early 2021, where they did restrict, I believe it was, you can't buy or sell Robin or GameStop uh, stock, if I remember correctly. It was either one or the other or both. And so the main point is not to say why they did it and why that was right or wrong. The point is they were able to restrict your money and your access to it whenever they wanted to. And so... I'm sure they've gotten better since then, and I haven't been following this space in a long time, but that really puts a dent in my trust in these fintech companies because they can, under, under any circumstances, restrict access to your money. That's not to say that other banks won't do that, like you know the big banks or what have you, but I'll ask this actually to you, Tony, right now. Out of all the brokerages and banks that you are aware of, if there were to be a major financial downturn <laughs> or some major problem that happened with you know the stock market or finances what company would be the most likely to restrict access to your money and if you guys have anything uh guys the comments answer the comments down below just answer that question but tony what is the first company in your mind or brokerage company that comes to mind that would restrict access to your money in a financial catastrophe i mean the headlines all said robin hood right so <laughs> it's the first one that comes to mind I will say there were a lot of other companies during that time who also did restrict. It wasn't only Robinhood, but they definitely got the most of the headlines and definitely had the most amount of deposits between a lot of the younger crowd and whatnot at that time uh, that, that lost a lot of people a lot of money. So yeah, Robinhood's the first one that comes to mind. Yeah, so the first thing that comes to my mind is also Robinhood, right? And so it's all fun and games until you can't access your money. Yeah. Then it becomes a problem, right? Now, I'm going to ask a, a similar question, but uh, it's going to be reversed. Which companies or brokerage companies out there that you can think of that are the least likely to restrict access to your money because they're so big, it's very hard for them to fail? Not saying that they can't, but what are the least likely to do so? Exactly what you have written there, Fidelity. Fidelity is my people. Four trillion in asset, or assets under management, I think. Four to five trillion in assets under management. They're making some money. <laughs> I yes. think Fidelity so is okay. So yeah, I and agree. So all of those discount brokerages, Vanguard, Fidelity, or Schwab, right? And so I don't know within the three which is the least likely. That's going to be up for debate. But I know as a group, those three are the ones that if you have any amount of investable assets, I would highly recommend you focus a lot of your money in there. I wouldn't focus your entire asset pool in Robinhood. That's just probably not the smartest thing to do. If you want to put some money here and there, like, you know, that's fine. You want to experiment with fintechs. They do have good, like we mentioned before, good types of incentives. I think that's fine. But I would never put my all of my assets into Robinhood. That would just be ridiculous, right? And I think a lot of us here would agree with that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my take on that. And I want to also give Tony an opportunity to also respond to. So, Tony, what is your take on this Robinhood gold card? So 
I guess I guess one of the main things is uh, you know my first point here, which is what Stan said. <laughs> so every, everything that Stan said, I, I do agree with. Um, I, I will say before I get into like the other bullet points here. Actually, no, it isn't the bullet point. What are we saying? Um, I think I heard. I think Calvi was telling me there's a one percent match. So like if you deposit six thousand dollars, there's a one percent match. So you get sixty dollars that pays for the annual fee. Again, is that going away after a year? Who knows? But at least it's paid for the first year. So that's. Uh, that's uh, one thing that I that I remember um, reading. Also, again, yeah, the trust in Hob and Robinhood. So I have a lot of experience with Robinhood. It's the first brokerage I started out with when I first uh, really got started investing in 2019 around there, um, which is like you know nothing to most people <laughs> in this game. But in 2019, I, I was in Robinhood and I basically had all of my money in, in tied up in Robinhood, and uh, there came a time where. Um, you know, investments, maybe we're doing better, whatnot. But I remember hearing a lot of stories of a lot of people getting like the Robinhood debit card and they were getting their, uh, a lot of their money out of their account was funneled through. So I guess somehow the debit card got leaked. It, it, who knows how it actually worked? I know when you say the word hack for some reason, everyone says it's not a hack. It's absolutely not a hack. Um, <laughs> so people defend whatever they want to defend. But that's what happened. I remember a lot of people got debit cards and then money started getting siphoned out of their account by osmosis, who really knows. Also, in that same time period, around 2020, 20, I think 2020, um, you know, during lockdowns and whatnot, I remember there was also occasions of just accounts being uh, like either locked or shut down. And again, just with, even without debit cards, that money was somehow being fine. I just kept reading these things. So I said, you know what? I, I don't want to have all this money <laughs> tied up in this one company that seems to be still young, even though I think it's 2013 was found. It's still pretty young because 2020 is when we had the influx of people. And whenever you have a massive amount of pipeline of people coming to something, you're sure to find the cracks. And they definitely did crack a lot of different times. So I said, you know what? And I transferred all my assets over to uh, Fidelity. And I haven't you know, looked back since. And they've always you know, treated me well. I will say nothing ever happened to my Robinhood account. Um, I only had one occasion where I was like trading and stuff. And it's like you have that... Um, you have that rule where you can only trade three times in a given week, week if your assets are under 25000 So <laughs> one time I lost a few hundred dollars doing that. But other than that, they didn't really treat me wrong. But again, it's going back to that trust in Robinhood um, that I think has been burned, at least for me, just because of everything I read. They might be fine now. I know they're decently positioned now. They have a high cash balance compared to some of these other uh, you know, brokerages, like maybe M1 and whatnot. So I, I don't really know the future of them. But I, I, I think the perception is reality for me. And I think we lost Tony somehow, so we'll have to figure out where he went to. But yes, I agree with what Tony said. And so, in terms of what is going on with, uh, you know, Robinhood and Robin Gold, you know, we also think about things like Silicon Valley Bank, for example. Oh, I think he's back here. Oh, so what happened? Yes, it just like cut you out. But in any case, oh, I was continuing sorry. on. I was saying that we have to think about also, like for example, Silicon Valley Bank and how that happened, uh, where yeah. all of a sudden it's just like the bank shut down and all your money was there and it was gone, right? Of course, there's also, you know, FDIC insurance, that sort of thing. But like, you don't want to be in that position if you can avoid it. So obviously, diversifying is very important across multiple banks. But, you know, you want to put the majority of assets in a bank that would probably not be in the same situation as Silicon Valley, Valley Bank. Yeah. And I also want to mention also, uh, there's no welcome offer on the Robinhood Gold Card, which I think is very important, which also makes it a, a reason why it may not be the best card to get unless you're, again, starting out uh, and you want to make Robinhood, you know, a bank for your assets at least to start and to see kind of where that takes you. Um, John kind of pops in and says, yeah, people forgot how Robinhood behaved with GameStop trading. Yeah, it seems like such a long time ago, just like yes. what Sylvia said. She said, how long ago was the whole GameStop situation? It does seem like a long time because it's almost three years ago now. But oh, I, yeah. I still remember it to this day, how crazy it was and how Robinhood got so much flack for it. And for rightfully so, because... To restrict money or how things go in and out is just not really that appropriate for a bank or a brokerage, I guess. But for a fintech, you know, it, it, you got to take that with a grain of salt. Yeah. So there's that. JP also says, what they are offering on paper looks incredible, especially the Roth and 401k match. But I don't think they will deliver. What if Peter Thiel transferred his Roth to Robinhood? Will they match 3%? And that's <laughs> very true because I, I mean, it was how, how many millions did they have in his Roth IRA? Do you remember, Tony? I'm not sure. But yeah, a lot. So enough they, to, bank to, to match <laughs> that would be insane. That would be such a huge blow to like their bank account reserves. I don't know what would yeah. happen. 
Uh, Claire Vaughn also likes Fidelity. Fidelity is great. Yeah. I love Fidelity. As you know, my, my best video is the Roth area video yes. from Fidelity. And it is, you know, it's a great video. And hopefully a lot of you here can take advantage of the back to Roth IRA. You do have time. It's April 13th. So you got two more days to get that Roth conversion in to hopefully, you know, get that money into those, those Roth assets. So definitely check that video out if you haven't uh, done so already. Uh, David Williams says, I like PayPal card better than Robinhood, which is very important actually to notice that you do get 3% cash back on all PayPal purchases, mm. which if it's an online shopping card, it's basically everything. So um, I, that is something to be to, to think about. Um, and he also says he'd rather not have all his investments in a place like Robinhood. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, David, relate to that, myself and Tony included. Um, Keith also mentions that Chase is known to lock up people's money and cancel accounts without explanation. It sounds like it's algorithm based. Um, I personally have never had that, although I have seen a lot of stories on Reddit, and I'm sure you have too, Tony, about that too. But there's always something under the hood when you look at those stories too. I'm sure there's something going on, um, mm. you know, with that that as well. Um, John likes Vanguard, is what he says. It's been really mm. great. Vanguard, I've heard, has a kind of a the interface is not updated. It's very yeah. old. When they, they haven't really updated the interface. But other than that, that's kind of not why I use the brokerage. Use it because they have good, you know, investment funds with low ERs or expense ratios. And so if they if they continue to have that, I think it's gonna be a good a, a good place to put your money. Uh, Schwab also is also a, a very good place to go as well. And then JP Knowledge says the card will not stay at 3x cashback indefinitely. And I agree with that hundred percent. I just don't know when that's gonna be the case when they uh, take it away. They yeah. will start with that then change to giving you 3x Robinhood dollars in one to two years. It's not sustainable. I, hmm. I can see that. Because even right now, the structure is 3x Robinhood points uh, back to your brokerage and then brokerage to your bank account. You cannot directly transfer the points to your bank account. And so you, you already see that pathway is being formed. So I think that's pretty, pretty true. Um, JP also mentions that they bought the X1 card and they will follow the same path as them. Mm -hmm. Um and then Vincent says he's also into Vanguard. It's perfect. And yeah, I mean, I think that's a really good uh, segue into, I think, our break now. I think, oh, I want to also cover what Keith said, I think, at the very end mm -hmm. here. We talked about, you know, he says it's a 524 slot. He said it's better to get a business card or two with an actual welcome offer. It's a better return on spend, which I totally agree with. Um, mm -hmm. If you're like, you know, 224, you can take one, then that's fine. But if not, you're 424, maybe not worth it to get a Robinhood Gold card. And, you know, who knows if they'll keep the 3% offer, which is true. I mean, definitely the transfer and the rollover is going away April 30th. But the 3% match, you don't know if it's going to be here for the rest of the year. It will take away next year. We don't know. Um, he says don't fall for it. I agree. Uh, again, I want to point out that it is a lot of, quote, free money, depending on how much you transfer over. But then you have to hold your money locked in Robinhood for five years. And, yeah. and I don't know if you want to do that or not. I, I personally would want to do that. Um, and then their CEO wouldn't commit that they'll keep – the three percent for eighteen months, so definitely something to to look out for. Okay, let's go back to our favorite uh, our favorite faces here, me and Tony's beautiful face and your hair, yes. by the way. I know that Cesar loved your hair. People, uh, some <laughs> new people here. Uh, Monty Lou's in the house. Thanks, Monty, for showing hey. up. Appreciate it. Uh, you're always welcome to, to be here, whether uh, late or not. Uh, we also have Jacob in the house. He said welcome or hi before. He also says that he loves Fidelity, so that makes three of us now with Fidelity. Mm -hmm. Fidelity is my favorite, um, yep. personally, uh, so I use them, and it's it's been nothing but uh, a good news with them. Uh, and so those are really good. Um, JP Knowledge says Peter Thiel has $5 billion in his Roth, so that's a that's a ton of money. Hmm. Uh, Actually, 3% match of that hmm. is going to be a lot. <laughs> yeah, right. Can yeah. I say, too, uh, yeah. on, the, on, the, on that point uh, before, um, with Fidelity and whatnot, it's, uh, it's another thing, too, to go from, now, I don't know Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, at least back then, when I had issues with my account and I needed things fixed like immediately, you know, there was no one to speak to. There's no chat service. There's no calling in to Robinhood. There's no customer service line. So at least I don't know what it's like nowadays. Maybe they hire people, but Fidelity, you call on the phone, you can literally get some not financial advice, but you can learn a lot. Like I've learned terms and just like the options world and you know, how things get called away for covered calls and, you know, puts and whatnot. So I've actually gotten educated just by a random rep that I called on Fidelity. And you can call at any time of the night and they will either talk you through a decision and even sometimes help you through a decision depending on how you're talking to them. But, of course, not advice based on you, but general knowledge just based on what's happening. So I, I think having an institution that you can call like that is mm -hmm. huge. I think that's huge. Plus the physical location. Like I have one not far from me. Yeah, I can go to 
I think that's really good. I've, I've actually never called into Fidelity to ask a question, but I didn't know that was an option, which is pretty cool to hear. They're knowledgeable. Always. It's crazy. Yeah, that's that's insane. Well, that's great. Okay, good. So I think we have some more comments here. So Sylvia says, all these financial institutions have skeletons in their closets. It's a matter of whose bones you can tolerate rattling in the background. And that's, that's for sure. I mean, we all know about Wells Fargo and their situation, how they create accounts for you and, and whatnot. But, you know, they're getting better now. I mean, they've changed their board. They've, like, you know, got new credit cards that are better. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to say that other banks don't do that, too. Like, Bank of America is also... Uh, had that done too, as well as uh, U.S. Bank, I believe too. But that just mm. wasn't as prominent in the news too. So you're certainly mm. right, Sylvia, that you have to f- just figure out which bank do you feel to be the most comfortable with and go with that particular bank. Um, there was an interesting question here at the top that I wanted to cover too, and I think we have some comments to that. Um, Hacker is traveling in about two weeks, which is kind of soon, but I have no credit score yet. Um, so basically, a new a newish person to credit. Is there any option of a travel credit card for me, and will it have an annual fee or foreign transaction fee? So I don't know how you want to answer that question, Tony. Well, how do you go first for that? So no credit score, just getting started out. I mean, it depends what kind of access you have to people, <laughs> because in one example, an actual you know story from recently, my brother-in-law had no credit score. His dad allowed him to go as an authorized user on one of his Amex, I think Blue Cash every day. Who knows? And you know, shortly thereafter, um, with you know doing nothing, he just got added as an authorized user. My brother-in-law now had a score around seven thirty, and then with that, he went and applied for, under my recommendation, um, a Capital One Platinum card just to get started, um, just to see if he can get approved for it. Because I think we went for a Freedom Unlimited, and he got denied. So then he he got approved for the Capital One Platinum, and then from there, <laughs> he within a month he upgraded to a Saver One. So, I mean, there's, there's like little ways in there, and I'm pretty sure he maybe in some world could have gotten the Venture um, Rewards card. So uh, that's just one story from that. If you're able to get on as an authorized user, that, that's very possible uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> to, to get one of these travel cards from Capital One or wherever else so that will let you, um, you know, within a short amount of time. Because now he's only, what, two months into his credit journey as the authorized user, and now he has Capital One Platinum, a Saver One, uh, and a Chase Freedom Unlimited. He just got approved now for it last uh, couple days ago. Yeah. So that's my thought. There. Yeah, I mean, he also added some more detail. He said he has a Discover and Amex Everyday Cash Back oh. card, but they're boring without <laughs> travel bonus. So I, I don't know what it means by no credit score. Mm. Um, maybe it's just he had these cards for like a month or something, or maybe a couple months, and it's not yeah. really quite there yet. I would say in two weeks from now, it's just use the cards you have. I don't yeah. think there's anything any rush for that. And then, you know, in the future, you can start to plan for other travel credit cards. And once you have a credit score, it'll become a lot easier to get uh, those travel bonuses. And hopefully we'll give you that foreign transaction fee, like no FTFs and no annual fee too. Yeah. Okay. Things done on a short notice like that usually don't end up well. So take your time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do what you got to do. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's keep going with our uh, slide deck here. We have some more questions that people have asked us. So I want to make sure we cover those as well. So Dalton has the next question here. Um, he says that if Chase were to update their Sapphire preferred and reserve, what multipliers, perks, and credits would you like to see added? I see people talk about how the preferred is in desperate need of a refresh, and I'm curious on your thoughts on this. And then he also mentions, Tony, so we kind of went off of this, Team Classic Gold or Team Robin Hood Gold. Ooh. So what say you? Well, <laughs> so the, it's a good question. All right, all right, it's a good question. Right, look at look at how nice they both they both look. The classic gold and the Robin Hood, kind of half gold. I don't know how it looks in person. People, I see thumbnails where it's like it's solid gold. I haven't looked into it too much. Is it actually like what, well, some should be solid gold? Well, not solid gold. They should be. I think it's se- ten carat or seventeen carat gold. I can't it's remember the carats. Really? Okay, so yeah. it is plated then at least uh, <laughs> with some gold, which I do appreciate. However, if you've ever looked, if you ever looked back in the day, remember when we were in grade school, guys? Remember when we were looking at our our, our stencils or you know, our little whatever you call those, the pencils with the, the colors and stuff? Remember the gold option? The gold option was like, okay, it sounds cool, but it looks like how this Robin Hood card looks. It's kind of like a dulled brownish looking thing, and that's what gold really is. But the thing is, I'm not on team regular, you know, gold. It's team classic gold, which is referring mm-hmm. to the Amex classic gold card. It's different. You see the difference there. Now, the Amex classic gold that I'm looking at my screen right now, it looks to me what I think gold should be. 
So I think we should probably change the word. Like the actual gold color should be changed to like the Amex classic gold version. I think that the whole, we need to change the vernacular we use. But in this case, I'm not interested in the, you know, the browning, whatever the regular gold looks like when it's mined. I like the refined classic gold look. So that's my answer. I would say that, yeah, <laughs> um, classic gold does look good, at least in this like picture, right? But of course, we have to see the card itself to see what it looks like. Yeah. I think yeah. Clairvoyant said it's 10 karat gold, but mm. there's actually another solid gold version. I don't know if the whole card is oh. made of gold. It's if you, it's like if you get 10 referrals, they'll send you a solid gold version of the gold Robinhood card. Huh. But there's like limited availability, and of course you got to have referrals and like all this other stuff, and so, and there may be some kind of you know report to the IRS or something like that. I don't know what the situation is, but that's what has hmm. been reported. If you get ten referrals, you get a solid gold, gold card. So there's that. Well, the Matt Lawson Pipeson says it's anodized stainless steel, just like the gold. At least the the card that is the regular card for people who don't get the 10 referrals hmm. uh so there's that um did you have any thoughts about the chase sapphire preferred or reserve and what you'd want on it i mean nothing that no one's already said already uh or what you're about to say my first thought when i see that question is literally what you have on the screen right there is a, a 3x groceries i think it would be great for the company i think it would be great for everybody that has you know these types of cards i think it would just be good for everybody if they just added a, a grocery category and be a, a huge player in, in like beating Amex, even though people might say it's easy to beat Amex, but I would say that's my only thought for that, and I'm sure you'll articulate something probably more. Yeah, I mean, when I thought about this question, because this is something that's been asked a lot about yeah. what you want for the Sapphire, and as someone who has never had a Sapphire Preferred or Sapphire Reserve, I kind of look at, at this more, what would drive me to get one of these cards specifically? And so for me, for the Chess Sapphire Preferred, it's really like, the groceries is the big one, right? So they have online groceries. That's okay. You can like do Kroger mobile wallet and like that would work out. But like for the most part, you should have a grocery card in Chase's Sapphire's ecosystem and they don't have one. They're missing groceries and gas. And so if you miss one, that's fine. But missing those two, which are pretty common categories, I think is a, a miss, uh, especially when there's other cards like the city premier card that has the same annual fee that can have groceries on it for the same level. And so that's one of the things. There's also, I think it should get a 3x travel multiplier. It's only 2x right now. And I know that there's a 3x on the Sapphire Reserve, but with the release of that new autograph journey card that has the 5x hotels and 4x airlines, you have to look at that card at the $95 annual fee price point and say you have to make this card more competitive because 2x on travel is nowhere even close to 4x or 5x that the autograph journey has. So you have to make that better. Like everyone mentioned too, a welcome offer that's better would be helpful. They have had this in the past with 100K and 80K offers, but I think that would make it a little bit better for that card mm -hmm. as well. For the reserve card, you know, they have been nerfing, you know, this card a bunch of times, most recently with that priority pass losing the restaurant benefit on July 1st. But I think for me, for me, for this card to replace a card like the Platinum card, it has to do a few things. And the first thing for multipliers, I think the Rex and the Rex of Dining Travel is okay. I think it has to have some kind of 1.5x other category. Now, it could be like the Trace Freedom card, Unlimited card, or the Rise card, where it gets 1.5x on everything. Or if they want to go like the Platinum route and do like 1.5x on like, at, at, you know, two thousand dollars or more purchases, some kind of some level of purchases of uh, this level or higher. That's also something that I think should be on there, just because like having 1x on this card won't make me want to get this card for any reason, especially with that Capital One Venture X having 2x back on everything. Okay. Also, the Platinum card uh, has a lot of lounge access. Sapphire is cutting the lounge access, but they have a unique ability in that they have the United ecosystem also uh, partnered with them too. And so right now, the United Club is very hard to access through credit cards unless you have the Club Infinite card, which gives you unlimited access to the um, United Clubs. I think it's I want to say it's 550 or 650 annual fee. I think no, it's 575 mm -hmm. annual fee for the Chase Unlimited. Sorry, Chase um, United Club United. Infinite card. Yeah, but the Sapphire Reserve card doesn't have any United Club access. There is the United Explorer card with two passes per year, mm -hmm. and even that benefit on the reserve would be helpful to make this a little bit more helpful uh, to get in terms of a travel credit card, like a premium travel credit card. Um, they also, I would like them to have hotel status uh, as well, just like the Platinum gives you Marriott yeah. Gold and Hilton Gold. If you got like Hilton 
uh, Gold and like uh, Hyatt Discoverus, that would be a really big reason to get this card. And I think that would be really good for a lot of Hyatt people out there, especially because those Hyatt cards, they're okay, but the earnings kind of aren't that great on them. So having another way to get Discover status from Hyatt would be a good way to go. And of course, I would like to do this with no statement credits. That's, you know, we'll see how that goes because that seems to be the way that these cards are going. Um, with these, you'll probably end up seeing an increase in the annual fees of these cards. But I want to just mention that that's kind of what I would wish to have. Um, I know that Matt has a lot of, uh, Matt Clausen has a lot of uh, opinions upon this too because he's done a lot of videos on his own about this exact uh, topic. Mm -hmm. And so I think one here I saw, Chase should be really looking at Mobile Wallet, which I totally agree with. I think mm -hmm. all issuers should be looking at Mobile Wallet because the classic grocery, gas, travel, mm -hmm. like, you know, all these categories they can all be consolidated into one category, which is the mobile wallet category. Whether you put a limit on that or not is up to the issuer, but I think that is it should be a more of a, a normal category. Kind of like how they're using online purchases, online shopping as a new category. Uh, that should also be new too, be, or that should be on a lot of cards too, because a lot of people these days do shop online, and that's kind of a miss for a lot of uh, multipliers for these credit card companies. Um, Filmos says CSR is trash, so you, I think you're in the same boat as uh, my boy Cesar. Yes. Uh, and uh, Matt also says that the Club Infinite is 525. Thank you, Matt, for mm. correcting me. 525 annual fee, and it's super awesome. Yeah, I think if you fly United and you don't have the Infinite card, uh, you should get one, especially if you fly it like a lot, because that's a great way to get access to those lounges. So that's mm. what my thoughts are for my wish list. Do you have anything to add to that, Tony? I, I love the idea of uh, you know hotel status, especially. I don't know if Hilton would ever get that. It would be really cool, but... Uh, that's why like, I liked the video that Joe Barreto did recently talking about uh, the Founders card, which again is like an additional, I forget how much, maybe 595, something like that. But that gives you like a lot of different statuses that when paired with the Chase Sapphire Reserve could be a more powerful card. But again, you know, it's a thousand dollar bill. So just some sort of status. I don't know if I would even value <laughs> high Discoverus, to be honest. I mean, uh, my wife has Discoverus. So There's nothing really special, really, you get with it. It's kind of trash. Mary Gold <laughs> it seems to be the same. Um, Hilton Gold is like where, really where it's at. So if I got that, I think that's really powerful for a lot of people. That would, that would get some eyebrows raised. Yeah, I, I agree with that for sure. And Monty chimes in saying, here saying he has a friend who has the JP Morgan Reserve. Uh, and that card does come with United Club access. And, you know, obviously that's great for the Chase, the, the JP Morgan Reserve card, but a lot of people don't have that. <laughs> so, uh, I, again, I don't have to be like unlimited. It can be like, you know, four a year, <laughs> eight a year, like US, the US Bank Altos that gives you like the party pass for eight a year. Something mm. like that would be just nice to have and, and a more draw to have that card and would probably push more business to United, honestly. So I think it'd be a win win for everybody. Mm. So there's that. Okay. The next question comes from RemGB. Uh, so he asks the question, how good are points for travel, especially flights during school, vacation weeks, or summer? Because he finds it hard to find availability for a decent deal for booking with points. This is where I think the CSR is helpful because you get at least 1.5 cent per point for working with cash in such situations. He has a family with kids. This is one of his biggest problems to use his Amex points and other transferable currencies. Uh, Tony, do you have any tips uh, for summer or Christmas holiday travel bookings with points? So I, I never actually did like the two where I can compare like perfectly from my personal experience, like, okay, Chase, Portal versus whatever. But I just know my experience, which is Hyatt and Hilton Hotels using their respective or you know, their respective currencies, I guess, transferring Chase points for Hyatt. But in all the times I've ever booked anything that happened to be during, you know, busy times, there's a few things that I found along the way. And for the most part, usually like, uh, I, I don't know if it's easy to see here, but more specifically, when I was booking this Charleston trip to the Mills house, if you look between uh, dates, what did I put here? I think I put uh, August and May. And you can see that the May is a little bit cheaper. It's just depending on when you're actually going to be on vacation or you're going to be out of school and during these holidays. Typically, if you just look a few days, give or take, given how long your vacation is, a few days outside of the holiday day, you can change your, well, maybe cash price a lot less. Uh, and sometimes, you know, 50% less depending on just 
you know, picking a couple, you know, days difference. Um, it's funny. I don't, I don't know if I actually put the. Oh no, I did put this on the screen. Like this Hyatt, for example. I think that was the end of May. Was a four hundred and fifty three dollars for this hotel in Charleston, and then a couple days later in June, it was seven hundred dollars a night. So you know, basically a, a fifty percent increase on the cash price just because you decided to check a couple days after. So I think that's my first thing. Is yeah, it's going to be a little hard, but that's part of finding a good redemption. So planning ahead, like I mentioned here, booking as soon as award availability is open is another thing. So as soon as you have an opportunity to pay with points, you want to book that because typically you're going to get the best deal. The longer you wait to book the travel and to book the points, sometimes it can be inflated and has been inflated in my case a few times. So, you know, as soon as, and, and what I mean by award availability is just the ability to pay points for a Hilton stay or a Hyatt stay. Hyatt's infamous for, you know, everybody taking all the award stays, being able to pay with points, and then now you only have cash booking. So planning ahead, you're going to get the best price. You're also going to be able to deviate from those couple of days here and there and maybe get a cheaper cash price if you have to go with that. And then you're also going to be able to book with points um, just by doing it as early as possible. Also, typically I found, yeah, early or late summer usually offers the better prices because it's not in the heat of when you're, the standard proletariat is going on vacation where everybody like you and me are looking. So, you know, maybe late May, I know some schools are getting out, uh, you know, around there and maybe you have some time, uh, like down in South Carolina, they're out at the end of May in New York, it's uh, June, you know, so I guess it depends what state you're living in. And then late summer, I mean, Hey, if you have a little summer off, you could possibly wait till like mid to later August is where I'm also found some really good deals. But like, of course, if you're booking July 4th, <laughs> expect some hotel price is going to be expensive depending on the area you're in. Um, and like I said, I mentioned here, it depends on the location too. Like, is it even an area that is super touristy? Like, you know, where I've been recently, Charleston, St. Augustine, you know, Orlando, these types of places, Boston, you know, during these holidays is when you get at some crazy stuff. Um, and it's good to know and research the areas and cause they all have their own little holidays. Like I would have never known without doing a tour in Savannah, Georgia, that, St. Patrick's Day was the craziest time of the year and they have a million people, almost like it's Times Square for the ball to drop, <laughs> that there would be that many people just for St. Patrick's Day. So if I just was just like myself and just like, oh, I guess I'll just book at St. Patrick's Day. Let's go to Savannah. It's a quiet town, right? It's really slower than molasses, as they say. And then I would realize like, what? The, there's a million people here. So sometimes looking up the area you're going to be like, is there any holidays, like extra holidays in the where I'm going? And you can kind of Go back from that and figure out where the best, you know, cash price and stuff would be. <laughs> um, what else did I say here? If needed during on-peak times, try coordinate FNC. Yeah, so I have some people that I talk to who just build up free night certificates from like their Hilton hotels. Um, maybe they have uh, cards like the Marriott, you know, Boundless, or you have a Ritz card, or you have, um, you know, uh, the Hyatt card that gives you a free night certificate. Any of these cards, um, you know, Wyndham and whatnot, who knows, uh, with points. It, sometimes it might be worth it if you're going to be taking like non-peak time stays, use all your points for that, or you pay with cash if you can, if it's cheaper. And then during the times you, if you absolutely need to do on peak times and during holidays, maybe schedule your free night certificates for those times. And this way you could have the least amount of cash out of pocket, at least the way I think about it. And, and, and that's, I think that might be possible um, for some people, especially. Um, and then also the thing I put here, sorry, Stan, um, if you have uh, kids and stuff, I don't, but I do know a lot of people who watch this stuff, they have kids, and most people in this chat, I think, do. Um, you want to, yeah, you want to find hotels that are... Oh, it looks like he got uh, lost again. But I do want to actually mention, I agree with everything that Tony says about booking Rex for these uh, family stays and uh, the kids' stays. But I will also want to mention that if you haven't checked out Dugraz's channel, uh, Duke Ross is actually a really great resource for that because he also has kids too. And to kind of on the line of what you were talking about, Tony, sorry, I think you dropped out again. Yeah. Um, the, uh, he actually uses Hilton's because he has an ability, I guess they have an ability to, when you book hotel stays, um, you can actually have connecting rooms that are booked alongside each other, which is actually a pretty unique ability. And I think there are other that do that, but I don't know because I don't really have kids. But he is a really good resource for that too. Um, and so I, I'm sorry, Tony, I don't want to, want to continue with what you were saying. Thank you. Yeah. My whole entire screen blacked out. I was like, what the hell? Um, <laughs> so yeah, it, like, like Dugras, yeah, great resource on all of that for sure. That Hilton does have that. Um, Marriott also does have some that I've found that, have, you know, some of the brands do have a lot of like connecting rooms. It just depends what property they're renovating and whatnot a lot of the times, but at least for these specific places that I've been to, Hyde Place, Hyde House, Embassy Suites, um, Holiday Inn Expresses, I've noticed 
uh, can have those connecting rooms um, and or rooms that have uh, like as a base level room, different sections that you can put your kids on and or <laughs> rooms that a lot of them have a lot of queen, like double queen beds. So this way you can, you don't have to share, you know, one bed with five of your kids or whatever. So, <laughs> so yeah. these are the places I found that did that. So I thought that might be of some use. And of course, uh, depending on where the location is, uh, the place, the high places, houses and holiday inns will have a free breakfast. So if you have kids, save your money. And then maybe if this helps booking Hilton's with that Hilton brands that have dining credits that you can pay for your kids' foods and stuff like that. So sure. I know it's not necessarily the, the, the topic at heart, but it's just something I thought might be interesting or worth it. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of relate to what you were saying. For me, it's harder because I don't really have kids. I recently got married, and so I don't have the same uh, difficulties with booking trips. It's basically based off my work schedule, not based off of major holidays or you know spring break, things like that. And so um, I put these two cards up here because they both have a 1.5 extra redemption in their travel portals, respectively. Sapphire Reserve, obviously, is something that you use, and that's fine. Uh, it, the biggest thing is you want to book as far as you can in advance because you'll have the most opportunity to know what kind of good deals you have and you have the, all the availability that's possible, both for airlines and for hotels. Uh, I also want to mention that Wang Wei had a really great uh, comment as well. Thank you, Wang Wei, for leaving this down here. If you haven't checked out his channel, by the way, he's got some really good travel tips, uh, especially. So definitely check out his channel as well. He says, the Amex Business Platinum gives you a 35% back on redeeming points and it gives Centurion lounge access. Hmm. So I think if you have the Amex Biz Platinum, that is certainly an option for your MR points too. I think once you redeem your points for that selected airline uh, at that level, that's a 1.57 cent per point redemption value. The only thing I would say about that particular um, opinion is that it's only for a airline you selected, like for your airline in sale credit, for example. And it also has to be first in business class redemption too. It can't be for economy. And that can be problematic mm. when it comes to someone with kids. Because as we all know, for example, Luke points to miles says this all the time. Like he can't all the time book business class, first class for all of his family because it just be way too many points. Uh, but if you're like someone like myself, I have a player too, just like you, Tony, you and your player too, uh, or your, our wives, we just two of us. So it's not as bad as traveling with a whole family. But I think the main thing is to make sure you book as far as you can in advance. Okay. So the next question comes from Joshua. And he says, should I product change to the Ritz-Carlton card this summer in case Chase changes the ability to make that change or wait another year to get the Bonvoy Brilliance welcome offer before product changing my bound list to the Ritz card? And uh, I know Matt Clausen just did a video about his predictions for the Ritz-Carlton card, which, by the way, is a very good video. So definitely check that out um, after this if you can. But uh, basically what he's explaining is he wants to get the Ritz-Carlton card earlier rather than later because he doesn't want to have anything change. And I don't, I don't like doing that necessarily because you can't predict what's going to happen in the future. So you don't want to do something based off of some kind of prediction. You just have to assume things are the way they're going to be and then kind of go through the motions that they are. But if you were to do what you wanted to expect, what you would do is you'd have a boundless, you'd product change to the Ritz. You would have to keep the Ritz for one year. At the time of recording of this, it's $450 in annual fee. So you'd pay that. But then you product change the Rich to the Boundless after one year. As we all know, the Rich Carlton doesn't give you that free net award until after the first year. So you may have to wait a little bit first to have that pop into your merit account, the 85K free net award. Uh, but that's kind of what that cost would be. You would product change the Boundless, get, get the Brilliant, because you can't get the Brilliant welcome offer if you have a Rich card at the same time. And then once you secure that welcome offer on the Brilliant, then you can product change the balance back to the Ritz again. And I think you can mm. do this within the same year. I think that's okay. But mm. it's a lot of moving parts, right? And so I always recommend get the balance list, get the brilliant first, deal with the Amex stuff first, and then you can product change back to the Ritz Carlton because that's always going to be an option for you. Now, I think the, the question I was asking themselves is, is that going to always be the case? And the answer may not be yes. You know, it may actually change. But we don't know what that change is going to be. It's difficult to really predict that change. So... To, to do that prematurely, I would not do that, but I could be wrong. So it depends on your comfort level, but a, the way you do it, it's more of a lot of a back and forth. So I don't know if you feel the same way, Tony, about that process or not, but I don't want to mention that in terms of what I would do. No, no, I think that's, I actually wasn't even aware that you couldn't get the 
a brilliant welcome offer if you're just holding a Ritz. Not that you had one before. I didn't realize that was a thing. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's the biggest. The biggest one for the brilliant is that you cannot get a brilliant welcome offer if you have a Ritz card currently. Huh. But if you take that Ritz card away by downgrading it to the boundless, now you're pretty good. I want to say there may be a 30-day period too, but I have to look back at the terms and conditions. They're pretty. They're pretty complicated, so I have to just re- refresh my memory. So, um, can I ask yeah, you then? What would be the the benefit necessary? So, what would be the benefit of product changing to the Ritz first if you're going to product change back? Is the idea that maybe if there are changes in the future, that you could you'll have that funnel to be able to product change back to the Ritz? Or I think what he wants to do is to secure the secure the Ritz Carlton card because yeah. maybe they'll make a change where you can no longer do that anymore hmm. so he wants to have the rich card ultimately but it's going to be a problem because of the brilliant card not yeah. getting that welcome off, or not having that welcome offer available to you if you have huh. a rich collagen card interesting yeah hmm. so that goes to a break i think we're gonna keep going since we're running a little short on time here if we'll go to the next question here um ian asks how many credit checks do you guys have on your account i was at 16 and <laughs> just lost four and i'm now at 12 just wondering what a credit card, I think even content person, has hmm. for credit checks. So I'll start with you, Tony. How many credit checks do you have? So I actually hadn't looked at these in a while. So you made me, you forced me, Ian, to get on Credit Karma and to figure this out myself because I just, I don't know, I just, why I don't really, I'm not as methodical as Stan. So here we had, yeah, Experian at five, TransUnit at one, Equifax at three. I don't know if that's uh, bad or good, although I was kind of surprised by the TransUnit and Equifax. I thought it might have been higher. But then again, I am getting a lot of business cards lately. So I don't know. What do you, is this a bad credit report, Stan? What do you think? I mean, it depends <laughs> on your credit score, right? It's just, it's not just your hard pulls. It's like everything uh, taken together. But it is, you know, I, I think this would be sort of you know, what I would expect to see on a lot of people's hard pulls. I mean, it's it's not bad, but it's not good either, right? It's, it's kind of both. <laughs> it's kind of average. You know, for, for me, I tend to make it, be as low as possible. Um, mm. You know, I do integrate business cards into my strategy. I do use Amex cards too, which does help, especially when you apply for them with the soft pulls. So I've actually done a really good job with my hard pulls. And so at this point, what I have with all the credit cards that I have and the, the where I'm at in my credit card journey, I only have two on Experian, two on TransUnion, and zero on Equifax. And three of those hard pulls, two Experian, one TransUnion, came from that triple... Uh, uh, application spree I did in September of last year with the U.S. Bank Altered Reserve, the Built Mastercard, and the Chase mm. in Cash, <laughs> and I have one of those falling off in August of this year. So I actually have three, but it's good though because it's part of gardening, right? And so now that I'm going under Chase 524 in about three three days or so, mm. I now have a really nice credit score and report where I have very little hard pulls, very little new accounts, you know, and so and under four uh, under 524, so I can now start applying for Chase cards, hopefully. And seeing that I have a low hard pull count, I can now add to that without much problem or much thought. Mm. Of course, you know, you always want to keep those in check too if you're like myself who does not own a home yet. Because when you want to get like a home loan or a car loan, you want to keep those as low as possible. And that's mm. always been in the back of my mind as well. So I, I'm very conservative when it comes to hard pulls. But I think once I like buy a house or do do that, I think I'll be much more liberal in terms of my applications and not worry as much about how much hard pulls I have. Uh, on my credit report. Hmm. So sad. Yeah. Uh, Frugal, that's fine. Thanks for showing up, by the way. Uh, welcome to the live stream. He says he never gets a hard pull from Equifax. It seems like Experian is the most popular, and you're absolutely right. It is the most hmm. popular. Almost entirely, I get Experian credit card pulls. Uh, I know mm-hmm. all of my chases are Experian. Um, TransUnion, it depends on the bank, but it's it's something that I definitely see is Equifax. I've never been pulled like my entire life in Equifax, which is kind of hilarious because I've been doing this for a while. But so, you know, I, I don't know. I think Experian is the big one to to look at. Okay, all right. So let's go to the next question here. Uh, Ian also asks if I have two Amex charge cards and three Amex credit cards, can I still get two more Amex credit cards? I was reading an article on Forbes that said the limit was five credit cards. And charge cards didn't count. Wondering if you could clear that up. Well, Tony, can you clear that up? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> these things are always, uh, you know, data points at the end of the day. But at least what's commonly regarded as the main data points here is, uh, like it says right here, yeah, you can have up to five personal or business credit cards. Credit cards meaning 
cards that have credit limits. So like you guys, uh, like your charge cards, the, the two that you have, um, to the person asking the question, I forgot the name, um, you know, if you have those charge cards, you can see there's no direct spending limit. They have the pay over time limit, but that doesn't count. It's just, you know, this is what they have. But at least the cards, those three credit cards that you do have, like a Hilton card, a Delta card, you know, Blue Business Plus, what have you, all these cards with credit limits, um, those are the ones that mean up to five. But <laughs> more recently, it's now changed since we've actually been on YouTube, really, the last couple of years. It's now not just the five card rule it's the four five six rule like some people have been under four like stan i think you had this issue and then, then you were able to break over six no, i mean to six but then there's people like sledge who has eight <laughs> so so these things are subject to change but at least as a general guide a general rule up to five maybe even up to six for for a lot of people um is so yeah you'll be good to get more credit cards but just remember just make sure to figure out which card you're applying for next and if it is a credit card and then I, I noticed this got lost uh, on over the years, but there, I remember reading like years ago, like, okay, you're allowed up to 10 charge cards at once with American Express. Um, so I, I, I was struggling to remember how you could even get to 10 charge cards without a uh, business card, but I guess that would be it. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the idea at least. <laughs> yeah, if you have a, like five businesses, each business gets a business platinum card. You can see how it adds yeah. up pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. But for me, you know, basically for me, I try to do, I, I've never been over the five card count. It's always been five or oh. less. Every time I apply over mm. that, I get denied, but then I just say, I want to cancel this card and they kind of let me go through. So that's mm. been that. We have a super chat, by the way, by Mr. Keith S. Thank you so much, sir, oh. for the $5 super spot. Can you product change an Amex credit card to a co branded card? I'd like to change one of my <laughs> Blue Business Pluses to a Hilton Business card. Unfortunately, I think the answer is no. Um, you can ask and, and be nice and, and say you love them. <laughs> um, maybe that would help a little bit, but I don't think they're able to do that. Um, I don't even think you can do a Blue Business Plus to like a gold card or a, or a business gold or a business platinum card. Um, no. I thought you could in the past, but I think that has been – that rumor has been negated. Mm, but Yeah, I think you could. Yeah, I think you could like five plus years ago actually. I think it was a weird downgrade option, but not yeah, not anymore. Right. Well. <laughs> I don't know. I know you want a Hilton business or Keith, but unfortunately that's not the way that we're going to have to get that. <laughs> I also have some data points coming in here too. I have uh, John who says uh, for credit reports, he has his hmm. highest is five with Experian. Others are one. So five, one, one. That's pretty good. Um, Dr. Vinny Bumbat says Tony Ink train equals low hard pulls. Yeah. I mean, once you get the inks going though, each one's going to result in a hard pull, but the way you're doing it is great because you're doing player two mode too. So you yeah. kind of split those in half, which is going to be very, very good. So it ends up being like one hard pull every six months as opposed to like one every three months, which is going to look a lot better. Yeah. I'd yeah. say so. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt Clausen says seven Experian, two Transunion zero effects. Still very good. I mean, that is still a very solid, you know, credit report and credit. Uh, what I'd expect to see for a lot of, of us in the credit card community having a lot of hard pulls on Experian. Um, and Frugal Dad Finance says, I never got a hard pull from Equifax. Oh, sorry, I said that already. But yes, he gets no hard pulls from Equifax. Keith says, everyone hits my Experian with nine pulls, uh, one TransUnion and Equifax at three. So yeah, Experian is always the biggest one for everybody. Um, Matt Clausen says, Barclays only pulls TransUnion. That's good to know. I've applied for one TransUnion card, or sorry, one Barclays card in my life, and so I don't remember that, but that's good to know for sure. Especially those of you who want the Barclays Wyndham Business Earner card, which is mm. a very popular card from them. Filmo says that he has 13 Experian, 10 TransUnion, 1 wow. Equifax. So Filmo has been doing <laughs> some work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Much more than the rest of us has, but you know, as long as you're getting those cards, Filmo, I think that it doesn't necessarily matter how many hard pulls you have. It matters of do you get approved or not? Or is that a problem when you submit your application? Yeah, he okay. just got a in cash too, Phil Mosley. So oh, doing, congrats, Phil Mosley. Awesome. You know, with that new, hopefully the new bonus too, right? Uh, I don't know, actually. I don't think he said. Okay. Hopefully, well, hopefully yeah. it was a new one. You can always <laughs> ask. I think there's a thing we can call them within 30 days and, and, and make sure you get that. True. Um, oh, just one more thing here that you also want to talk about. Oh, just, uh, yeah, the four, five, six that it's kind of changed to, uh, changed to <laughs> over the last okay. few weeks. There's always data points, you know, always data points for sure. Mm -hmm. JP knowledge, uh, is, was in the house a little earlier, hopefully still here, but he said that you both have tied the knot in the last 12 months. So I want to congratulate you both on that. Thank you so much. JP knowledge. Really appreciate that. Um, the question is how much do your player twos participate in the points and miles game? Do they get excited for a new welcome offer? Do they look for hotel points deals or stays at Hyatt, Hilton, or Marriott? 
Or are they sick of hearing about 524 and are only putting up with it because you take them to nice places? So what's the kind of da- dynamic between you and your wife, Tony? So I'll, <laughs> so I, it's funny because I did a video on this one right here where I, I did talk through the journey of it. Essentially, the abridged version is, uh, or the shortened version, is we both basically started our journey within a couple of months of each other. She had some... Um, you know, she wasn't fully on the board with credit cards, you know, at, at first, you know, everyone has the, the, you know, maybe the misconception that if you have credit cards, you have debt, no matter what, and you have a bad score, um, and, and whatnot. So you should be using debit cards. So it went from me getting my capital unsecured to like a couple months later, realizing like, oh, I'm fine. You know, Anthony's doing it fine. And then she got hers and then building up her score to the, you know, to the point where she can get approved for more cards. Now today, <laughs> actually like you know a few weeks ago or whatever it was she got approved for the new uh in cash offer so now i think she's at like 10 or 11 cards maybe 11 i'm, I'm actually have to go through and, and check so um yeah so she's definitely a, a game time player and every now and again she'll say like uh if, if we maybe have spend coming up or we just don't have a card that we're hitting spend on she says is there something i need to apply for <laughs> like she literally says that is there something we, we need to be maximizing because she knows all these different you know stays and whatnot are all um, subsidized by all these points so she's seen the value from it over a you know five years span of growing our credit together so at this point she knows the deal and uh, still her score with 10 plus credit cards is higher than most people in the world like, like 780 or 790 whatever it is through transunion um so that i think that's that's social no she's not really tired about it maybe the only time she's tired about it if i just keep raving i'm like man if we did this we can get this card then i could do it there she just wants to see like what do I have to do? And then what's the end result? <laughs> that's that's where we that's where we've come to this point. But no, she's a yeah, she's a game time player, literally. Well, that's <laughs> great that she's kind of doing this hobby alongside you. That's something that we, I don't have with my wife, but we'll talk about that in a second. I do want to point out this super chat by Mr. Vincent Pasquale, Ooh. big support of the channel. Thank you so much, sir, for the two dollars super spot. <laughs> Sounds like we should be a player one, player two combo too. But hey. he says Stan and Anthony is Stanthony Venture credit frog. I love it. I yeah, love I think I, love it too. I think. Are you spoken for, Stan? Yeah, I, well, I don't know. I ask, ask my wife. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll ask a different day then. <laughs> yes. Uh, Tony also says, we want Stan and Tony Rock, Paper, Scissors contest. I know that's oh. been a thing. So uh, <laughs> at the end, we'll kind of do that just to make sure that how that works out. Okay? All, right. Good. all right. Good, good question, so, Anthony. Thank you. <laughs> uh, not so at all. Good. Okay. Correct. So for me and my player two, it's a little different. And so um, while my wife does get to benefit from the points and miles game that, you know, we, that I do to get all the different redemptions, uh, she's not really more of an active participant. She basically is more of a, uh, what credit card should I use? Please tell me I will use them sort of thing. So I actually have a video about this coming up probably the next month or so about how we use our player two strategy and how, how we do this now that we're married as a married couple. But essentially I had set up her, credit cards in a way that would be very easy for her to understand and kind of help teach her how to use a certain credit card for a certain expense. For example, she has a Chase Freedom Flex, so I taught her how to activate the quarterly categories, how to use the categories for the 5X during those quarters, and then change it every so often. We've done that for many years now. Um, it's it's sort of like what I put here as this picture is that we, we're very, uh, I would say, we are very different people, but we are very complementary to each other. And so she's a very good cook. So she cooks food and it's delicious and it's wonderful. She, her, her palate's very good. The taste is very good too in terms of her ability to taste good food and great food is very, very well done. I'm not that way. I'm very much like food is good, food is bad. Like that's it. So <laughs> basically I all say all to say is that She's the one that really mans the cooking portion of our relationship. So she cooks lunch, she cooks dinner, you know, if you know we're doing cooking and the way that I support her in doing that is I sometimes I'm her sous chef, so I would chop vegetables or chop food. But then I also my role in this is I have to clean up all the dishes, which totally sucks, by the way. But she keeps telling me that, you know, you love it, you love it. And I, I don't, you know, again, I don't love it, but that's fine. But I think it's good to have a balance. So when she cooks and does all that work cooking, I'm doing all the work cleaning. So we all get to enjoy the food together. And it's more of a balanced approach. The same is true for finances. She, well, as I take her lead when it comes to cooking, uh, she takes my lead when it comes to credit cards. Of course, we do finances together, but when it comes to credit cards, what to use, how we're using it, what points we're getting, 
how we're going to like use those points or redemptions. It's basically up to me. And then she, I just kind of run up by her. And then usually it's okay because she doesn't have too much you know, involvement in that. So that's kind of how I would say our relationship is with the player two setup. Of course, I haven't up, really used her yet in terms of her credit report. Uh, I know a lot of player ones, player twos, they like refer each other back and forth. We will start doing that now that we're married. But before that, we didn't really combine those finances in that way at that point. But now we will. So that's going to be very exciting moving forward. But that's kind of our relationship and our dynamic when it comes to player two setups. And everyone's different, like you've seen with Tony. Um, you know, it sounds like your wife is more into it and understanding, you know, hotels and, and whatnot. And, and so that's really great. But it's just a, a different perspective on things. Yeah. Absolutely. Anything else about that? Tony or no, I love that. I, I think it's really important to have that <clears throat> kind of dynamic with the person that you're living your life with is to have positions in which you both have jobs and that both parties are respecting those jobs. Cause as soon as that goes out the window is when you start getting into fights and there's lack there of respect and, and you get into a lot of issues. So as long as someone has a dedicated role towards something and that they are doing and you're not doing, <laughs> I think it just leads to a better relationship down the line that, both parties yeah. are in the battlefield respecting each other's uh, jobs. Absolutely. Love it. Okay, so we have Matt's question here. He is, uh, he says, what is your most outside-the-box or unconventional opinion when it comes to a credit card topic? Also, as a fun one, what are your favorite foods, and do you have a restaurant or food on your bucket list that you'd like to try in the future? Tony, go ahead. So uh, I didn't really have an opinion, I don't think. <laughs> I, think, I think. I don't really have a, a like a... I don't know, like a credit card hot take on it. Maybe if I thought more, but I don't think so. But I did just, I thought it was an unconventional setup and uh, people are going to be pissed because all I do is talk about the setup. I just love it. I don't know. I just, I just love this setup. Um, but this was like unconventional credit card setup for a given time. I, mean, I think a month or so I used it, which basically we, we called it the Godzilla bifecta, essentially using the curve card as the card in which you can put a bunch of other cards onto and you can move transactions between different cards. So if I have my Yada card, for example, on the curve card, and I also have my wife's Chase Freedom Flex, if I didn't want the charge to go on the Yada card, I can move it now over to her Freedom Flex. And then that just helps with multipliers if you charge it at the wrong place, or even if you don't have a card with you, you could use it. Um, like she could leave the card at home and I could charge using my curve. But the idea with the setup was that the Yada card, I don't know how it is nowadays. I'm not really happy with the company nowadays. But at the time, if you swipe their debit card, which it is now, you can get a 1% chance of getting the item for free. And if you don't get it for free, you usually get a couple percent back, maybe like 1% back in cash back. And then also some tickets in the daily raffle system. This is a, a huge rabbit hole <laughs> on this topic. But basically the idea was I can use my curve card, pay with the Yada through it. If I don't get the item for free, I'll just move it back over to a flex card and no harm, no foul. And I'm just going to keep doing that as many times as I can until I get the item for free because it's there's no harm if I don't you know so and then that did happen I eventually got dinners for free and I got some you know test of charging for free a couple of times so so it definitely uh, it was a good setup for while it lasted but I don't I'm not using it anymore because again we got to get more chasing cards mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah I think doing the chasing thing is probably a better use of your time anyways <laughs> probably, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then let's see here so uh, real quick Xavier ID says my player two lets me get the cards I want and just wants me to tell her what to use that's kind of, yeah, I, I can see that. Uh, that's kind of what we do, too. Well, I can't be like, you know, to my wife, like, get this card. She'll be, like, not happy about that. I have to explain mm. to her with the reasoning why I'm getting it. <laughs> once she has a card, she will let me tell her what to do for, with it. Um, I devise my issuer so we, when we can refer each other eventually and not get too confused on what cards are in what name. And I think, Xavier, you're exactly like me, actually. So I have Amex cards and uh, bank, sorry, Amex cards, and she has none. She yeah. has Chase cards, like the Sapphires and the Freedoms, and I have none. So eventually oh. we're going to cross talk and we're going to go ahead and do those referral bonuses. And that's going to be our next phase in our credit card strategy. So that's really cool that you know you and I are pretty similar with that. Uh, Ahmad is here. Ahmad is a true first person. Don't tell CJ. Uh, what's <laughs> up, Stan? <laughs> so it's good to see you. Um, and then Lynn's Roster Hustle is here as well. Congrats on the channel growth, Stan. Love your informative content. I appreciate you, Lynn. You've been here for a, a long time with my channel, so I really appreciate your support as always. And of course, you're very um, good with the comments and a lot of informative comments as well. Uh, I do want to go over to my answer, though, for this question, which to remind everyone was what's the, um, what is an unconventional 
recommendation, and mine is of course going to be Bank of America. Like I, I think it's a really great end game setup. It's very underrated because we think about welcome offers for the most part. But when it comes to when you're not working on a welcome offer or you run out of them, this is the setup to really have. I mean, you have on the, the left here, you have the choice of the premium awards for ninety five dollar annual fee or the premium awards elite for five fifty. That gets you that three point five and two point six two five percent categories on those two cards, and then you supplement those cards with customized cash rewards cards or the Susan G. Komen card, which is exactly the same, just a different card product. And if you're Platinum Honors, you can get 5.25% cash back. And you can get as many cards as you want with those in terms of you can get two for yourself, two for your player, two. Now you have four. And you can probably get more if you want to get like an unlimited cash and then product change that into customized cash rewards too or travel rewards and product change that as well. There's so many options to get a lot of 5.25% basically clone card army where you can just have a bunch of cards to just knock out five and a quarter for a lot of different multipliers having that catch-all premium wards or premium wards elite in the background and so i'm a bit been a big proponent of this uh strategy it's something that is more end game like you have to be platinum honors to have this work out so you have to have a hundred thousand assets with bank of america or merrill edge or merrill lynch and so that is harder to do for you know at the beginning but once you get there, you get there, and you can definitely use this to your advantage on your everyday spending. So there's that. And then for the other uh, slide, we actually agreed on the other question, which is what are our favorite foods? And for me, that's Japanese. And for you, Tony, is it also Japanese food? I think it is. It's definitely the most fun. I mean, I, I guess if I have to choose one forever, it's probably just going to be like turkey and rice or just a burger. But I mean, I mean, if it's like if it's something I could just do every day, yeah, I think Japanese would be a lot of fun. I would love to do that. Yeah, <laughs> and I think Japanese for me and my, my wife too. We love Japanese food. So any like sashimi, nigiri, uh, sushi, all that stuff is delicious. Um, on the right here is actually wagyu beef, and for me personally, I've actually never tried wagyu beef because what happens is I go to a nice steak restaurant, and it's like. You can get like this much Wagyu beef. It's like maybe like four or eight ounces of it, and it costs like a lot of money. Or you get like a 22 ounce ribeye for a lot more, mo- like a lot less money. So I always end up going with a 22 ounce ribeye because it just makes more sense. But one day I do want to get Wagyu beef to see what it tastes like. It sounds like it's like I hear that people say it's like butter. Like you bite into it and it just it just melts in your mouth. And I want to know what that's like. Mm. So one day I want to try that out. Um, you can see on the bottom image here that there's a lot of marbling a lot of fat um, content in the beef and so that makes it that really nice texture and and flavor and so certainly want to try wagyu beef uh, even kobe beef which is a certain uh variety of uh, wagyu beef that is very very sought after in japan but what what do you think about that tony yeah i love it I, i'll be honest i'm a little more uh, <laughs> uh i don't know what's the right word uh, I don't know. I'm a little less. Uh, I'm a little more tame with my with my Japanese stuff. I'm a little afraid to have like fish and all that stuff. But I love going to you know these places and having like the sweet potato rolls or avocado rolls, and then that in conjunction with like the um, you know like uh, hibachi chicken and rice and something like that. So I love all that all mixed together. I also like crab. That's the only other thing I will actually have is mm. is crab and you know snow crab and all the ones that they offer so yeah i never had those high level beef stuff before either okay i think it's worth trying it sounds like uh michael pythium has had that before he calls it mm. it's amazing so that's great to know uh jennifer also says wagyu is way wow. better than anything i've ever tasted before so that's a high praise for that so i definitely should probably get that done in the future um she said she had snake river farms wagyu i'm not sure what company that is hmm. but I'll check that out for sure um Keith says Wagyu is the word for beef in Japanese, so all beef you get in Japan is Wagyu. Hmm. Thank you for that, Keith. Uh, correction, uh, but you know the beef I'm talking about is like the Kobe beef, the very like high marbling. I know there's different levels of Wagyu, like A5, for example, would be a level. Mm-hmm. Of um, but yeah, I definitely thanks for the correction. But I, the kind of beef I'm talking about is like that really like high quality beef. Hmm. Um, also, want to mention that uh, Bluesy Submarine. Hmm. Left five dollar spot. Thank you so much for that. I need to book a flight on point on A A, but the dates I want are marked wait listed. I think it's wait listed. Any suggestions, please? Thank you for the great content. So for me, I'm not actually the best person to ask about this. I would actually refer you to someone like JP Knowledge, who actually does this a lot, especially flying to Japan, uh, you know, on A A or not A A, and he can help you out with your answer. My thought of this is when it says waitlisted, typically it means that you didn't 
book the flight early enough in advance so it's not available anymore. I don't hmm. know if there's a way that it can be a confirmed flight or not. Availability with ANA is very limited from what I understand. But again, hmm. I'm not the best person to ask in this space. But Tony, do you have anything to add to that? No, just divert to JP <laughs> for sure. Or Chase Yokoyama probably. He's been doing a lot of uh, ANA flights recently. Okay. Uh, traveling with Los, uh, LV says, sorry, traveling with LV says, in Japan, Wagyu and Kobe beef is a lot cheaper. We ate our <laughs> hearts out. Oh, I can't wait to do that. So probably our honeymoon will probably do the same thing as well. We get there later this year. Hmm. Um, and then Keith also says, if you want to buy Wagyu, then look at Pursuit Farms. They have exclusive partnerships in Japan. I will look at that. Thank you for the recommendation, Keith. Appreciate hmm. it. Um, Wang Wei also Wang Wei is also another great guy to talk or ask about yeah. this as well. He's in the chat, so if you want to like kind of talk with him about that, that'd be awesome. He says, "Waitlisted sounds like you're trying to fly to Japan on Singapore." Um, potentially, yeah. I haven't really looked at the types of bookings with ANA, but yes, ANA Singapore is a really great way to get great value with your points. But again, it's hard to get because it's you get a lot of waitlisted, like they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And so we'll kind of keep going here. We have another question from Cesar Joel, two legends. My question to both, are you guys going to the 2024 New Orleans Creator Meetup? Uh, would love to see you guys there and spend more time uh, with you guys. And he's referring to the New Orleans Meetup uh, during this Labor Day weekend uh, coming up in September. Tony, are you going? <laughs> uh, I haven't confirmed. Unconfirmed yet. I don't know. It's funny because when we did the Vegas thing, I was the exact same way until about maybe one or two months out. I was like, okay, now I'm going to go. And then I booked everything right away. So it very well be possible that that happens. But as of now, I don't like to say I'm doing something if I am not 100%. So for now, unconfirmed. It's also technically my anniversary since we, I got married in Vegas uh, for the last uh, meetup and everything. So I don't know if that's something she wants to do there or if we can, we have, we should go somewhere else. I don't know. Um, New Orleans is scary. I'm trying to stay away from scary places as well. Nashville was scary. I've been there for like three or four times the last couple of years. Don't want to do that again. Uh, so something crazy like Bourbon Street also scares me. I do love everyone. I'm just going to go through the bullet points here like Cesar and stand in front of me and everybody who's, who's going to be out there. I know it'll be an amazing time. Um, and who knows what happens, you know, a couple months out, we'll see. Um, but I'll think Phil is going to be there. No, we have to see Phil there. <laughs> Team no unconfirmed. Oh, unconfirmed. <laughs> oh, he, he will not be, he will also not be there. Excuse me, I said, said confirmed. So, Team Nola unconfirmed. Same. So, he may or may not be there. Same. Um, <laughs> so yeah, for me, I have confirmed going. Uh, I have at this point have booked the Ritz Carlton in New Orleans, and the reason why I did this was. Mm. I would say unconventional. So when you look at the Ritz Carlton card, it does come with this other bonus that's not really well talked about anymore. And then it also comes with three free nights. And these free nights are actually not the same as a free night award, but it's a, a free night that actually upgrades your room to one of those um, uh, like M level club suites. So your access mm. to the Ritz Carlton like club. And so the only thing with those three certificates though, is that you can only do this when you, uh, purchase a booking for two nights or more has to be a paid stay. And so there's actually an article by, I believe it's the points guy that tells you what are the cheapest Ritz Carlton's to do this at. And one of them actually is in New Orleans. And so well, this would be a great opportunity to apply this certificate to a paid Ritz Carlton stay to see what it's all about. And so I didn't book this on points. I booked it with cash. Uh, obviously I could cancel if I wanted to, because we have that, um, cancellation policy. But I think it'd be a good thing to try out. Um, if you look at the cash price of a Ritz Carlton, it's about $600 or $700 a night for the M Club level room. So for three nights, that'd be around two grand, which is kind of a lot of money. But with the Ritz Carlton upgrade, which I had to call in, by the way, to apply to my hmm. reservation, it did drop that number down to about 1400 tax and fees included. So you got basically a, a, a a free night in terms of instead of paying mm. for three nights, I paid for two nights, which is still a lot of money. But again, I think it'd be worthwhile because there's no other time that I can think of where I'm going to be able to experience the club level suite for the Ritz Carlton. And these, this is one of the, the nights that are, or one of the locations that is actually a good location to do that because most Ritz Carlton's they're much higher in terms of price, like 800, 900, $1,200 mm. per night. And so I would never be paying that kind of money, but you know, I think this would be a good opportunity to do that as well. Uh, we see that we have David Williams says Labor Day in New Orleans or Vegas is way too hot, wrong season. So he 
will probably not be there. Cesar is still here. Already booked. Can't wait to see you all again. I'll spend two nights at the Hyatt Centric and two nights at the Waldorf. Thanks for answering my question. You're welcome, Cesar. Thanks for so much for being here at the in the stream as well. Um, I appreciate that, sir. So that's the story with that for me. I think that's the end of our slide deck, so we can go back to our faces here. Um, I do want to cover a question that was asked a couple times that I don't want to miss. So Roman Romaneco K said, never had an airline card. If I get a United Quest that gives you two free bags for you or your companion, but buy tickets with points through some different program, do I still get two free bags or do I have to buy those tickets with that card or with United Points United? Thank you. Cool. So in order to have the United benefits, you must book the United card. So mm -hmm. you will not get any of those free bags if you use it through a third-party system. That is different from Delta, where you can actually get the benefits from the Delta cards without booking on the Delta card itself. And so that's the difference. So yes, for, to answer your question, uh, Romaneco, it's going to be, no, you cannot have those. You have to actually book it through the United card. Um, Travel with LB says, if you have any questions on the Japan trip, hit me up. Of course, I will certainly do so. Um, we'll talk offline about that. Stay at the Conrad Tokyo. Sounds awesome. Conrad Osaka mm. and Park Hyatt, which is also a very big hit for a lot of people. Uh, great. And so I think we're kind of moving towards the end here. Uh, I want to actually put this up before I forget. And to please smash the like button if you're getting value. We had a really great live stream today. 120 people of you here oh. in the live stream, which is awesome. So I appreciate every you staying to the very end. Again, we I love doing these live streams with you know, you know guests or with myself. I like guests better because then it's more of a conversation, but I will also do it with myself if necessary. Uh, usually once a month for this. Um, thank you, Tony, so much for coming on to the show. Stan, before you end it, I need to show you something. Sure. What is that? One moment. <laughs> Tony's going to be back. We're also going to do rock, paper, scissors too. So at some point we'll do that before we leave. But I want to make sure that we uh, see what Tony is going to show us here. Did that just follow me into the room? I think it did. It did, actually. Anyway, whatever. Well, I guess you might have seen it. But Stan, okay, so on a previous podcast, I just made a funny – I might have, might have super chat that I, I ch chatted and I forgot, but I said, Stan, uh, he, I had a question for him on one of his podcasts, which was show me your jelly cat collection. And for those unaware, the sax credit from his platinum card, he's using that, uh, to, to buy jelly cats for his, uh, his now wife. And I just, <laughs> as a joke during that stream, when he was showcasing his, his, uh, collection, I was like, Stan, can you buy me one pretty please? Daddy Stan. Um, and he actually said, oh, maybe we can make that work. And then, like, I think a day went by or a couple of days went by. He said, hey, Tony, what's your address? And he freaking sent me one. <laughs> he actually sent me one of the jelly cats. And he oh, knew somehow terrible. that my wife loves, uh, I guess, the succulent, right? He loves yeah. uh, succulent. Uh, she loves succulent. So really appreciate that, Stan. I wanted to thank you on live and in public. He's a good oh, man of his word. Man of his word, man. He gave me the jelly cat. I, okay. Now it sleeps I'm, with me every night. It keeps me calm. You know, and all oh, that. Good. I'm glad you like it. I think <laughs> the, the feet is actually what gets me when I see those jelly cats. It's like you have a stuffed animal with a smiley face, but then there's little feet at the end. Ah, I think yeah. that's what makes it everyone like go crazy over the cuteness. <laughs> <laughs> at least my wife thinks it's like ridiculously cute. She can't even like, you know, handle herself sometimes with that. Right. But I do also, before we get going, I also want to do the rock, paper, scissors. I know. Oh, yeah. That was promised. So we should do that. So just as a context, the past two live streams I've done rock, paper, scissors. Uh, I have been undefeated, not so only in overall, but just in general. Like no one has actually <laughs> beat me in a set of three. So we'll see how this goes. This is totally unscripted, unplanned. But as you remember, Tony, the way we're going to do this is I'll put my hand or put your hand in front of the camera. Put your hand here in front so we can all see. And then we'll go oh, rock. Gosh paper, scissors, throw. And then we say throw, that's where you're going to go ahead and throw rock, paper, scissors. Filma already says uh, money on stand. Hopefully I don't yeah, disappoint right. you, but we'll see. Uh, so are you ready for this? Tony. I'm, I, I think I'm ready. ready. I think, okay, wait, hold on, hold on. Wait, hold on. Okay. All right, I think I'm ready. All right. <laughs> yeah, I get to, sorry, I get to, it's hard because of the microphone. Okay, so here we go. Rock, paper, scissors, throw. Okay. All right. Rock, paper, scissors, throw. Oh, let's go, son. okay. Let's one go, son. zero, one zero to Tony. So I finally made my first loss, but let's see what we got here, okay? Breaking records tonight, baby. Okay. Let's go, Amon. Rock, paper, scissors, throw. Let's go, baby. Oh! Let's go. <laughs> oh, let's man, go. I lost tonight. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
So Tony beat me 2-0 with oh that. Oh my Actually, god, no way. I do have a banner for that. Let me just let me get this real fast because I have it. I never oh, thought I no. had to use it. But yes, yeah, so I have lost. I am now 2-1 in my series. And Anthony wins. Wow. Rock, paper, scissors there. Oh. Anthony is now the new rock, paper, scissors champion, at least for now. Um, <laughs> we see Ahmad already called it beforehand. The extent goes down tonight. He was right. Ahmad <laughs> called it. And then uh, Pod says rigged. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, I think a little rigged. <laughs> Maybe. And then oh. uh, let's see. Uh, D- Dalton says you have a chance to disown the king. You, you did certainly tonight, so uh, or today. So congratulations on Just that. Today. Oh, I want a <laughs> but, drug test. What's a drug test? Yeah, yeah I actually, let's go, I baby. Do. This is a great idea, Wang Wei. She get like a little trophy and like you know show it to them or put like little inscriptions on it, being like you know this live stream, this person won rock paper scissors. I should probably do that. That'd be really that would cool be funny thing you to could- have. On Etsy, you could probably get them. That would be yeah, so funny. Probably. Filmo says it was fixed. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you know what? I saw the last stream where you dominated Luke and Spencer, and I told my wife, I said, if I go on, I want to beat him. I said, I want to make sure I beat him. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was uh, it was easy for you. It was a, a letdown. So, well, for oh, me, it was a letdown. No. But I'm glad that Sorry. you were able to, to get that on through. Oh, Tony does says, that mean? Oh, no. Uh-huh. Anthony needs to put a championship better up in his apartment. I agree. On. Next time, you got to put one up there. Be like, rock, paper, scissors, champion. <laughs> I'll put it on the car desk. I'll just yeah, leave it he, there. He thinks he needs a, a WWE belt for the winner. Yeah. That's I think right. Cool. Okay. Oh yeah, here we go. I'm getting <laughs> yes. gold. I love that. I love that. I need you know, to we can probably get them all together and put them all. T- I think that's possible. We can just request a bunch of replacement cards a bunch of times. That's a good happen. idea. That's a good idea. Yeah, Maybe just like one a month or something. That. We'll have like five of us do it. Do one a month, <laughs> and then I'll be like, we'll have enough. I want a flavor flavor chain. Just all <laughs> I was gold championships. All right. Well, on that great note, we're going to end the stream here. But thank you so much, Tony, again for coming on. To everyone that came to the live stream, thank you so much for your support and your comments and the questions. We will again be doing this every single month. So get your questions in and we'll let you know, obviously, earlier on when the live will happen. Usually every Saturday at or every Saturday, one Saturday a month at 10 a.m. I believe, Tony, you have a live stream coming up very soon. So if you have time, definitely check that out as well. And to those of you that are still here, thank you so much again and have a great Saturday and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on stand.